Hey, here we go. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 25 of Mostly Football. Boy, oh boy, we got a lot to talk about. And if you caught last week's episode live, you were lucky enough to actually watch the episode. Unfortunately, a technical error happened with StreamYard, and we cannot download the episode nor post it, unfortunately. That's why you got to watch the show live, folks. Uh, I'll post a link, and you can catch us, you know, every Tuesday night at 930. But also my bad. We're not having a backup plan. So Shit better not happen this week. I know. Better not happen this week. I talked to Evan from Customer Support. Evan, if you lied to me, we're going to have another chat. We're going to talk about Epstein again. If I talk about Epstein again and this happens, I'll know what's up. But anyways, as we mentioned, folks, a lot to talk about. Um, RIP takeoff, uh, sports, uh, you hate to equate, you know, I'm not equating the two. Yeah, the transition's never easy, but this is a show where we talk about both, so here it is. It's mostly football. Thank you for saving me. That was quite a clunky intro. I'm not I'm I'm not good with death. Like I just I never give it its proper you know, how can you talk death and sports in the same episode? But we are slash news show. I like to cover topics and that's a topic. So it it's never easy. Um For those of you who don't know, uh, Takeoff, who is a member of, or was a member of the rap group Migos, was shot and killed uh, early this morning out of a private party. Yeah, Nate's just reading off this article here from MSN, uh, also CNN, Lisa Raceper France, uh, about half an hour ago from when we're recording here. Takeoff, who was one-third of the platinum-selling rap group Migos, was shot and killed early Tuesday in Houston, Texas. A source close to the group confirmed to CNN he was 28. Police received a call of a shooting in progress around 2.34 a.m. local time. Houston Police Department Chief Troy Finner said at a news press conference at a news conference Tuesday. Officers arrived to the 810 Billiards and Bowling Houston, where there was a private party and found a dead man at the scene. Two other people, a 23-year-old man and a 24-year-old woman, were also injured in the shooting and took themselves to the hospital with non-life-fending injuries, said Sergeant Michael Arrington with Police Department's Homicide Division. Employees told police an argument took place after the party ended when a large group of people gathered the front door area outside the building, which led to the shooting. At least 40 people were at the scene at the time of the shooting. Um... Quote, a lot of people were there, fled the scene, and did not stick around to give a statement, Arrington said. Finner identified the deceased man as Kershnik Kari Ball, also known as Takeoff of the Rev Group Migos. This this here, it kind of hurt. It, 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 like I told you earlier, it rubbed me the wrong way. Um... And that's right here actually speaks to what you said earlier when we were off the air. Uh, everyone spoke of what a great young man he is, how peaceful he is, what a great artist he is. Finish said later, adding that Takeoff was very well respected and nonviolent. You never, again, like Takeoff is one of those guys, he's been in a rap game for a very long time. And you never heard anything negative about this guy. I mean, yeah, people's like, oh man, these dudes suck, they, they music suck. But you know what? That's you. You didn't hear. You didn't hear that he was involved in this, involved in that. Like his, like one of his uh, counterparts. Uh, what's his name? Quavo, who's cheating on Cardi B and doing his extra shit. He was like the. He was he was the quiet one of the group. Like nobody really said much. He didn't say much. He didn't do much. He didn't get into all this dumb, dumb shit. For this to happen, is senseless. It, it was really sensitive. And this is like this is one is like this is one you said out. He was probably one of the good ones. Like he was one of those he one of those guys who just didn't get in trouble. He's a rapper. That's it. 
He mm-hmm. he didn't do all the extra shit. He didn't walk around like some of these rappers that were killed previously. You probably can say, yeah, these dudes, they probably, you know, they lived that lifestyle. This man was living his life. He was having fun. He's making a fuck ton of money, making really bad music. And that's it. That was that's really it. And my thing is this. These rappers, like I told you, they gotta stop moving like politicians. You have to. You gotta you, you can't just go out <clears throat> and think that everything's okay. Somebody don't like you. Somebody hates you, someone's hating on you, someone doesn't like the fact that you're successful. And they're gonna take that chance to take it from you. Dice games can get violent. Dice games can get really violent. Now I don't know what the art, what the altercation was about. I don't know if it involved a dice game. I don't know if it involved something different, but he lost his life over something extremely senseless. And that's my, and that's my biggest thing. Like he lost his life over something extremely senseless. And for what? For what? That's, that, that's just it. For what? Like they have, like rappers have to stop paying attention. Like you can't go back to these neighborhoods anymore. Like you can't, like I saw someone on TikTok, they was just like, "Why don't we ever hear country singers and uh, folks, the the folk singers and rock rap rock star like? Because you don't, because they don't do that. They don't go places they shouldn't be. That's just it. Like you, like people, like they don't go. Once they leave their neighborhoods, they leave their neighborhoods. They don't go back. Yeah, like for whatever Jason reason, Aldean goes back and smokes meth at the trailer park. Right. Like you don't see you like you see rappers that's like, oh, I'm just trying to get back to the community. That community trying to kill you. I mean, you look at Blake it. going back to the old mobile home and flying the rebel flag. You gotta look at it. Like Sorry. Young Dolph, for instance. He went back to his neighborhood to support his bakery. Dude, they're gonna take whatever chance they get to take you out. They're gonna do that. Like you, you, you gotta move different. You can't keep going. You can't keep hanging out with the same people you hung out with before. You can't do it. It's just, it's just something you can't do. So, like that, and that's just my piece. on like I said, when I saw it this morning, like at first I thought it was bullshit. I'm was like, not him. Like, what could he have done to piss somebody off to want to shoot him? And then I just kept seeing. It. I was like, it just, like it just, like I said, it's senseless. It's extremely senseless. Well, you know, it's, it's. Oh, we got a comment here. Mr. Comment. Dave's in the hey, you're having Dave in the comments. What's up, boys? What's up, sir? <laughs> yeah, it's totally senseless, like you said, and like I heard from uh, from a coworker earlier today. You know, apparently he was involved in a dice game that went south, and it's just you know, like we said, like like why does it have to turn? If you have a problem with someone to the point where you feel it needs to get violent, why is the immediate response to gunplay? Like, why don't you just shove a guy? Like punch a guy you know I, i'm not condoning violence but you know if, if you really seriously feel the need to get physical with someone like why just pull the heat out like because it's easier it, to shoot someone than it is to take an ass with them yeah it's 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 such a i mean talk about just short term you know uh, no respect for life just i mean that's that's probably of all the things, like a loss of life is tragic. Um, the fact that whoever did this is going to jail forever, hopefully, is tragic. And then just the idea that there are pockets of humanity where human life is so disregarded that you know it could be taken over something as small as a dice game. It, it, it is. It is crazy. It's. It's. it's uh, it's 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 extremely dumb. It's, it's just from like I said, it was senseless. Um, but and then because what's gonna happen is all it's, it's just a cycle. Like, but they gotta understand you gotta move different. Like if you make money, you can't go back. To, you yeah. If you, I mean, if you want to go back and give to the neighbor, cool, go do that. But travel smart. Have security with you. Have a, a not and not and when I say security, I don't mean your friends. I mean professionals, people who do this for a living, okay? Police escort, something. Even if you if you're going to a party, obviously you may not be able to get a police escort. But hire hire professional bodyguards. 
So that way that shit don't happen. It's 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 that simple, and that's for me personally. Like I said, with these rappers, they have a false sense of security. They think that oh, the neighborhood, the hood, love me. No, they don't. No, it doesn't. What the hood is going to do is going to do every. If it can get you back, it's going to get you back. It's going to chew you up and it's going to spit you out. Now, when it spits you out, you're either going to be in jail or dead. It's 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 tough, man. Like you should be able to. Like especially as a citizen in a free country, right? Who makes as much money as this guy does? You should be able to do. You should be able to party. You know, at, at whichever. If you're not breaking the law, you should be able to party whenever you want, wherever you want. But the problem is, like, when you have a certain status, when people know you have money, and when you're going to an area where, yeah, you know, uh, people don't respect life. Again, like, there's a lot to this. Like I said, crime, poverty. Um, why does this guy feel the need to be there? You know, just it's it's, it's such a difficult. It's it's very frustrating conversation to have because there's no easy answer. Nope. You know, okay, uh, lock the guy up. What you know, a, a man still dead, uh, a family still grieving, and now w- what happens? Like now you have a whole nother issue of all, you know, gun violence, you know, this guns are the problem. No, not, you know, let's disregard the fact that, yeah, you got this. (laughs) That's what I hate too. It's like, this is going to get turned into an argument of guns and it's got to be gun control. And it's like, if this guy had a knife, he would have stabbed takeoff. If this guy had a a bat, he would have hit him in the head. Like he was just a pissed off, crazy person at the time this happened. So it's just the whole thing is just it's just a bad it's just a bad situation in general. The whole situation is bad. And <clears throat> it, it's like it's not gonna stop. And this is a part of our culture. And this is the culture we want to protect. You know, and I'm reading articles saying that this guy helped change the entire sound of hip hop. Like whether or not I agree with that, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a huge he do honestly, like out of the entire group. I only time I heard him, only time I, the only reason why I know who he is is because he says his name in all his damn songs. Is it? I don't, like, you don't hear anything. He's not in the news. He's not marrying Cardi B. Or he's not dating this person or dating that person. Like, he's literally probably the most low key rapper you can think of. Like, you just know him because of the, his, again, he's with the Migos, but you don't hear anything other than that. Right. It's a sad situation, and you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna get all these, you know, these top rappers coming out and, and saying this and saying that, but you're not doing anything. You're, right. you're not doing. You're still promoting the same music that's killing us. It's just that simple. Like, and people act well. Why? Like, they want to act well. Well, why this doesn't happen to 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 people who do rock and do country and do this because they don't promote that type of music. They don't. They don't promote that type of music. And the thing is, too, it's like, talk about a dichotomy. I mean, people like me, I can listen to that music and enjoy it because I I enjoy it the same way I enjoy a comedy special. Like, it's absurd to me. I think everything that gets like, oh, I'm going to kill this and do that. Like, I laugh at it because I, I grew up in Whitesville. You know, I grew up in where everything was, you know, Mayberry and everything's all good, you know. So, like... I think there's a whole section of the country that views his music as that. It's like comedy and absurd. And then there's a whole section of the country that like feels it. It's like, no, dude, this is real life. Like you think it's crazy because you don't live it. So I, I mean, there's that whole aspect of it too. So I mean, it's, 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 a whole it's, it's a bad part of our culture. Mm-hmm. It's a bad culture. It's a bad part, but it, like I said, this, this is probably one of the rappers that just kind of like, extremely irritated me i was like this is dumb like now we just now at this point we're just killing each other for no reason after like we've been doing it this is just now it just solidifies like we like we will eradicate ourselves before anybody else will well again i mean i like to make jokes i like to do this and that but for real i'm serious now RIP to the man and um, serious condolences to his family. Because I mean, for God's sakes, he's only twenty eight years old. I, twenty eight, dude. Shit, that's that's a you need. That's a short life. Yeah, I'm still an idiot. I'm still learning how to live. I'm thirty two. <laughs> right. 
Here's another interesting one. Uh, I don't know if you guys have caught this in the news. I heard about this, and then I was like, I didn't really get into it because like, I was like, I don't care. It's it's, it's whatever happened to him, they probably deserved it. Um, but was he I naked? hate to smile. Was he naked? So, <laughs> from what I understand, uh, you know, I've heard underwear, I've heard half naked, I've heard this, I've heard that. I heard naked. When I heard the story, I heard naked. From what the story I understood was the attacker was definitely in his underwear. <laughs> what is what is unclear to me is how clothed Paul Pelosi was. Because I've read reports <laughs> that he was also half naked. Which <laughs> listen, that's not entirely crazy if it's in the middle of the night and you're in your own home. I sleep half naked. So if an intruder comes in and the reports are that I was in my underwear, it's gonna look weird, but it's gonna be true. So <laughs> The th- here, okay, so let's get to the uh, let's just get the the meat and potatoes of it for the people who have no clue. So over the weekend, I believe, um, this guy David DePap broke into quote unquote the Pelosi home in San Francisco. I guess he wanted Nancy. He was saying, according to reports, "Where's Nancy? I'm gonna wait for Nancy," and was actually there with Paul Pelosi. Paul Pelosi was able to call 911 and um, apparently through code speak was like, I'm here with a friend, you know, but the dispatcher understood his code as like, I'm in trouble and officers were sent out to the scene. So there's just so much. Okay. So what, let me present, let me present the extreme sides and then we'll meet in the middle. So the left would have you believe, and I hate to say the left, but you know, it's the terms we use. The left would have you believe that this guy was a crazy MAGA conspiracy theorist, totally um, riled up by January 6th and all the Republican um, rhetoric, and he just broke into the Pelosi's home out of pure anger and political hatred and wanted to get Nancy, but there was Paul, and, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> that was a scene until the cop showed up. The right uh, has thrown out of like, there was this article from I think the the SM Observer, some sort of San Francisco Observer, <clears throat> that alleged that Paul Pelosi was at a gay bar with this yeah. uh, man and had been drugged by him or something along those lines and ended up back at his house with the guy and another person and you know basically a hookup gone wrong was the like extreme right so. In the middle, where I think this is ending up, is this is straight up a crazy dude who ended up in Paul Pelosi's home um, based off just complete being nuts and maybe a little too much um, internet influence. Uh, clearly, you know, drugs were involved from what his neighbors say. He was a drug addict and part of like this nudist community <laughs> there's so much to the story it's it's really it, that's why it's like you, you know i'm i'm stuttering i'm tripping over my words because there's a lot to it so this is weird this this whole situation was weird like yeah so so the basic report is a b and e uh of, of paul pelosi's life being threatened he got he did get attacked with a hammer like the police were there and they say that the guy hit paul pelosi with a hammer and paul pelosi was being treated for those um injuries so that happened there was an assault with a hammer the questions i have nate (laughs) okay so um you have apparently like i don't understand where how did this guy get in in the first place right where is this like a gated community or some shit isn't it a gated community is this not the Speaker of the House's home? Is this right. not the third person in line to be president if shit hits the fan? Right. Like, like you would where think, your security at? You would think some crazy guy in his underwear couldn't just break into your house if you're a police. Your whole security team got to get fired. The whole team got to go. Everybody. So, that, so that's what's weird to me is like uh, your average dad with a ring camera has more security than the Pelosi household. That, so that's right. strange to me. Another thing that's strange to me is initially it was it was reported that a third person had let the police into the house. And then that was, you know, apparently a false report. So then if that's a false report, 
it goes back to so now you're telling me that Paul Pelosi was able to let the police in while this guy was in his home, and then after the police came in is when he got attacked with a hammer. That don't make sense. That's very confusing to me too. That, that don't make that, that don't make sense. So he so he got attacked with the hammer, was able to get away, call the police, let the police in the house. No, 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 no. He he got attacked with the hammer after the police showed up. They witnessed it. So they let him attack this man with the hammer. Right. Also, apparently they were let in before any of this ever happened. You had a crazy man in your home, but the police, I don't know if they barged in what? or Yeah. Dude, it's so confusing. That's what's not like you have all these quote unquote journalists on tv being like we need to condemn this we need to condemn this they're not asking these basic questions of wait and then we, the wait, timeline doesn't make sense though time out, time, wait okay hold on. let me let me let me let me back this up let's 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 do some fucking let's do a little time traveling here and let's figure this shit out because i don't understand this so what you're telling me is crazy guy breaks into said house yes Homeowner calls police. Yes, he is allowed to go into the restroom to call the police. So he gets into the restroom, locks himself in there, calls said police. But he's like speaking in code, allegedly. Like, my friend is here, you know, I I think he's in trouble type stuff. So he's speaking in code. Right. And in the bath, whilst in the bathroom, locked in the bathroom, police show up. I don't know if he was locked in the bathroom, so I should I should or, clarify that. He, he or he was in the bathroom. else opened said front door for the police to come yep. in. Yep. And the police watched him get hit with a hammer. Yes. Everything from what I understand from what you just said is correct so far. <laughs> and very confusing. Somebody either somebody's lying or somebody <laughs> needs to be fired. It's just, there's no middle ground here. You're telling me that this crazy man broke into your house, you ran, hid in the bathroom, called the police, spoke in code, they show up, you get out of the bathroom to let them in, all while putting yourself back into danger where you get hit with a hammer. Yes. (laughs) That's a load of bullshit. That's the thing, dude. Like, come on. This story don't make that story don't make sense. You you you're not gonna sit here and tell me that that happened. You're this story is bullshit. This yeah. Okay. You, this there's no way. If this guy broke into the speaker's house, y'all need to hire him. The government needs to go ahead and employ him. Because if he's breaking into the speaker's house, there's no telling what he can get into. He's a ninja. He's with underwear and a hammer. He's a modern day ninja. He uh, underwear and a hammer. <laughs> you can infiltrate anything with that. If he's getting into your house, there somebody's lying. Somebody was doing something they had no business doing, and they use this story to cover it up. Because you're not gonna sit here and tell me that this man broke into your house. He was a hammer. You, if you're telling me that a, a drug addict is more sophisticated than the speaker of the house's security? Nah, nah, that's a lie. This whole and thing. Listen, did I post an insensitive meme on my Facebook timeline around Halloween about a guy with a hammer being of a homosexual persuasion with Paul Pelosi? Maybe, but that's besides the point. I, I didn't I, claim it was true. I think I, I think something. I think so. I think he got caught doing something he wasn't supposed to do, and <laughs> he Listen. had to get he had to cover it up. I I I, I think he. They, you're not. No, I'm sorry. I'm, this I'm is sorry. a guy who has a a couple DUIs under his belt. Mm-hmm. Very recently, by the way, a DUI under his belt, and I, you know. Many of us do. I'm, I'm no, I'm no saint when it comes to that department. You know, some of us have to you I'm just saying. That's, that's one thing with these powerful people who like to party may lead to another. It's just not, it's not an absurd idea. 
and he's married to Nancy Pelosi, so I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if this was a real thing. This shit here has. He was at a gay party, or he was at a gay bar, and he brought this guy home and got caught doing some shit he wasn't supposed to be doing. That's what that sounds like to me. I'm, 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 I'm willing to listen. To, I'm totally I'm open to that. I think that's funny. I, I kind of hope that's the case, just for the comedy sake. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm, you know, put me in the middle. Just you tell me this. No, there is no, that's fine. There's no. I, have, I still have questions. Okay? I, I, my questions are answered. He was doing some shit he wasn't supposed to do. I, I, have, I, I have questions about your security. Mm-hmm. I have questions about how you let the police in and then got attacked. And my final question is, there's a photo of like a patio area where this guy allegedly broke in, but all the broken glass is on the outside of the window. Exactly. Exactly. This this, this is my, my question for, for Mr. Paul Pelosi. Why are you gay? You are gay. How can I describe you? And why should someone be gay? Doesn't that make you gay? Yeah, that's oh, exactly it. He 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 was he was he got caught doing some shit he wasn't supposed to do, and he said they broke in. Yeah, I'm I'll just sorry. say most I'm break-ins sorry. usually don't happen with glass on the outside of the house. Not at all. That's breaking out. But what do I? If know? someone breaks into your house, you don't have time. Because here's the thing. You don't have time to let the police in. Like this, 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 this whole story don't make sense. There's a lot about this story that have. There's a lot of holes there, and it don't make sense. And that's and, all I ask. That's all America asks of our news media outlets. Is just ask common sense questions. Yeah, don't me, just play one side. You know, give, just, give me the truth because you're lying. Y'all lying about something. He got. If caught. you don't know the truth, just say that he got caught with his lover. That's what he wanted. <laughs> he got caught with his lover and he threw this man under the bus and now he got to be in jail for breaking and entering and, and assault with the hammer. Did they say oh, what man. kind of hammer? Uh the, was it the flesh variety? Uh very good question. Could have been a flesh hammer. Because I mean, hey, it, you know. It could have been say, Stanley, but not a Stanley, if you know what I mean. SA is a real thing. Even for me. Um, so last week, there was a story we talked about that I was the tin foil hat side of me kind of was like, oh, I wonder if this is why the show got taken down. Which so show? We talked to oh. our, our last episode there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We talked about an ABC News producer, James Gordon Meek, who since an FBA raid on his home a few months ago had not been seen since. And it was very odd since he'd been, according to reports from Rolling Stone and other um, outlets, he'd been working on a story about um, Joe Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan. So after this raid on his home a few months ago, he just mysteriously resigns from his position at ABC and goes missing. Yeah, okay. So the reason I want to bring up this here um, from The Intercept, there was a story about these leaked documents Um, about how the Department of Homeland Security has been working with all of the social media outlets, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, you know, Instagram, TikTok, what have you, to sort of like shape the discourse of what people can and can't talk about, you know. And the reason I bring this up, it is a huge story, right? You shouldn't have our government in bed with our public forums. That's what's known as fascism. That's what's known as propaganda. That's the stuff we always talk about. Russia does this, China does that. Oh, apparently, we do it too. You know, so uh, let's shine a light on that. Um, this is the kind of story where people see it and they go, "Yeah, duh." I mean, I know our government does that, uh, yeah. but it, I think it goes deeper than that. So, if you read deeper into the story, it talks about the specific things that, like, the DHS and FBI were looking for. Specifically, they're looking for talk about election 2020 deniers. They're talking about COVID um, vaccine efficacy deniers. They're talking about um, Afghanistan withdrawal. And there was one more thing. I can't remember. But it's like the thing that got me specifically that perked my ears up when reading the story. And you can go ahead and read the story from The Intercept. It's from Ken Klippenstein and Lee Fang um, right just yesterday, October 31st. 
um, titled Truth Cops Leaked the Documents, the, the Documents, <laughs> Leaked Documents Outline DHS's Plans to Police Disinformation. So the reason I bring that up, Nate, is our boy, James Gordon Meek, has been spotted. Yeah, okay. Just today. Uh, before I got on here with you, I saw it and I thought, holy shit, here we go. <laughs> From the Daily Mail. Uh, just today, exclusive, missing ABC producer James Gordon Meek is seen for the first time since he went into hiding in April, but refuses to answer any questions on mysterious FBI raid on his penthouse that brought his storied career to an abrupt halt. Nate, <laughs> something's going on here. Of course it is. This, this is fucking weird, dude. They threatened to fuck out those police flashlights. That's why. He ain't going to say nothing. He can keep his damn mouth closed. This is an ABC major news producer being completely silenced by our justice system in our own, in our, in this country. He's clearly afraid for his life. He's he not be. answering questions about the raid. He was working on a project about Afghanistan. Who else knows what he found out about? Like, what the fuck, dude? I mean, uh, we cannot talk about this enough right now. And I know we're going to talk about sports stuff after this, and it is what it is, but People, mostly football. Me and Nate here, ringing the alarm. I mean, I'm, it's crazy. This is where it is, but this is where we are. I mean, pay attention to this. I, this, is, this is an American journalist, like, being fucking threatened by our FBI. I, I don't hey, know. That's what happens when you poke around too much. They find out. They make you shut up. If you don't shut up, we're going to take this 12-inch flashlight, <laughs> beat you with it first, and then violate you with it. So your choice. So I'll just read the, the bullet points here. James Gordon Meek, 53, has been AWOL for the past six months after moving out of his Virginia apartment in the wake of a mysterious FBI raid. The Emmy-winning ABC producer resigned from the network just hours after federal agents swooped on his Arlington penthouse on April 27th. Dailymail.com. So I don't know, you know how you feel about your news sources. I've known Daily Mail to be, you know... <laughs> Fairly down the middle, I guess. They just report the news. <laughs> but I, I'm sure there's someone who's going to be like, oh, Daily Mail, how could you, you know, whatever. But um, DailyMail.com finally spotted him last Thursday at his elderly mother's townhouse in McLean, Virginia, where he refused to answer questions. Are they the sure boys, it was him? Yeah, I mean, these pictures are him. So. Oh, yeah, that's uh -huh. someone who don't want to be fucking bothered. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely somebody who don't even fucking bother. He, uh, he's an incognito. He's like, leave me the fuck alone, people. Uh, reports have claimed agents found a laptop containing classified information, but friends and former colleagues say it doesn't add up. Quote, if he did have anything like that, classified documents or similar materials, that would presumably be a story he was working on, uh, said a former colleague. This is a guy who's done a lot of good in the world. ABC would be firmly in his corner if it was for legitimate journalism, the source added. Um, Dailymail.com can also reveal Meek was due to accept an award in May for his coverage of the U.S. military withdrawal from Afghanistan, but ducked out. Yeah, he found something he wasn't supposed to find. Yeah. I mean, he, folks. He, he found something he wasn't supposed to find. Because the only you know, mysterious, he found something. He, well, I've seen a lot of these goddamn espionage movies and he found something he wasn't supposed to find. He lucky they didn't kill his ass. Yeah, right? I mean... He, lucky he didn't have a mysterious car accident. says down here, the divorced dad of two appeared to be keeping a low profile, parking his Chevy SUV several blocks from the property and ignoring questions as he slipped inside via back door. Yeah, yeah, that's somebody who's... who's <laughs> they got... They scared him. They made sure... It, his elderly mother was was definitely a, something that was dangled over his head. Yeah, he, yeah he, right. He was told to shut the fuck up. Uh, he was he, still wearing his. Sure he can say he can say what he want, but there's a lot of people who can get hurt if he does. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can say what you want. Uh, mm -hmm. We just can't guarantee the safety of your family. Absolutely. So he he just knows to shut the fuck up. He was still wearing his typical military style get up including an army field jacket with an Afghan flag patch, backpack, aviator shades, and 
Kefiev scarf, a nod to Meek's celebrated dispatches from the front line in Afghanistan. The April 27th swoop sparked fears Meek was being targeted for his trailblazing journalism, which has exposed shocking military cover-ups, friendly fire deaths, and foiled terror plots. He found something. He definitely found something. And you know what, dude? Okay. We're going to get into sports, and I get it. But I just, I want people to look a little bit more into that. Uh, Look a little bit more into David Crowley, who was working on a movie called The Gray State, about how this country could easily become a police state under the right conditions. He was murdered in his home with his wife and his kid and there was blood splattered all over the wall that said praise Allah and um, no. you know looked like, up. looked like a pretty crazy scene he didn't get the hint and then there was a gentleman by the name of Philip Marshall who uh, was involved in many CIA operations he was a pilot he was working on a book about 9-11 he was found dead along with his two teenagers and the family dog in their home. Didn't shut Supposedly. the fuck up. Supposedly he did it. He killed himself, he killed his kids, and he killed the dog. He didn't shut the fuck up. That's what it is. If you don't shut the fuck up, when they tell you shut the fuck up, they're going to make you shut the fuck up permanently. It's just that well, simple. By all means, people, whatever you do, do not, do not go out and look into David Crowley and the Gray State. Do not go out and look into Philip Marshall, which is also... A Daily Mail story that pops up when you look up Philip Marshall. Do not look into those guys because you will be doing a disservice to our American government. You really With all that being it. said, Nate, here we are in America. And thanks to these privileges afforded to me, we can talk about sports now. Jesus. USA. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. What a, it's a crazy transition. I'll just say that. It's a crazy transition, and I want to talk to our viewers on a real level. Some people think that some people think that if you criticize America, you should get out of America. I don't agree with that. I look at it like a relationship. You can love someone, but recognize their flaws, and want the relationship to be better. And that's what I want for America. I want to be able to criticize America all the while knowing that I love the values that I think most citizens, government aside, right? This is what we get here. Russian National Anthem. I think you understand what I mean. Like most people just want, seriously, like to be left alone, to be able to uh, make a living and to raise their family, right? You want security, you want family, happiness. Like it does, it's it's, it's not all a bunch of um, nonsense. And I think this idea that you are a communist if you criticize America, or you are uh, some sort of nationalist if you love America. If and everybody learns to just mind their fucking business, if it don't pertain to you, shut the fuck up and leave other people alone. Okay? It, it's, just, it's, it's really just as simple. Okay? You, you just do this. You need to shut the fuck up. Is that it? Just shut the fuck up. Mind your business and shut the fuck up. If it don't pertain to you, leave it, let it be. Okay, you know, and, and the thing, and here's here's the thing that I, I kind of have an issue with, and this goes for both sides. Um, if you see a family and they are, you know, forcing their kids to be whatever, mind your fucking business. Okay, just mind your business. It's not your kid. If if they want to fucking dress this child up as a fucking chihuahua every day and tell him he's a goddamn dog and guess what that's their business that's their child that child is going to grow up with though that's their business uh, to a certain extent right 
I mean, obviously, obviously to a certain extent. Everyone's saying, well, well, making your kids trans and telling them this, that's child abuse. You know what else is child abuse? Calling your kid stupid. Yep. Calling your kid dumb. Humiliating your kid in public. Getting on the internet and shaving your fucking kid's head because they got bad grades so the whole fucking world can see it. That's child abuse. If they're not physically harming this child, and when I mean physically, I mean... Um, beating or the other thing, I'm not going to say it on here, then it's not your business. If they want, if this kid thinks he's a fucking uh, tomato, then he's a fucking tomato, okay? If he wants to be a girl, let him be a fucking girl, okay? That's not your business. It's, 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 it's not like there, you can't, what you're, so at that point, you're trying to make, you're trying to put your values on another person. If they believe that this child can make decisions for themselves, then so fucking be it. Because that's just, it, it's nothing you can do. You can you can scream all day and you can tell them how bad they are. You know, it is what it is. It becomes an issue when you try to force your, your beliefs onto me. Now we have a problem. You can keep... Okay. You can, Whatever you do within the corner, the, the, the dwellings of your home is one thing. But when you start bringing that shit into the schools and into the, the TV shows and the movies, now I have a problem with it. I mean, I was going to say, where is the Nate uh, that I've known and loved? I mean, this is, this is yeah, you replaced Nate. I don't know who this guy is. No, no, no. Everybody love everybody. Be whatever you want. This is not the Nate I know. Do what you want in the confines of your own home. You want to make if you want to dress your child up, if you want to dress your son up like a fucking cheerleader, be my guest. If you want to make him believe he's a cheerleader, be my guest. I'm okay with that. Just don't bring that shit to me. Don't bring that shit to school. Don't force everybody else's kids to deal with that because it's we don't want to. If you it, it, when it when it's in the privacy of your home, guess what? You can do what you want. That's what I feel. Like if you just mind your business. Mind your business to let business pertain to you. That's what I do. I mind a business that pertains to me. And until your problems become my problems, hey, guess what? They ain't my problems. Well, and this is like yeah. that perspective feels like common sense. And then like somewhere along the way, you learn that like common sense is not common at all. Like it, it, it's a weird term, common sense. Like no, it's like it's not I'd like to believe we're all on the same page. We're not. Like, we're, not we're not even close. We're not even remotely uh, fucking close. But yeah, you would think balance, right? Like, okay, I, I would. Yes, my kids should be able to express themselves, but also like not impose that on others. Like, yeah, so don't point, you would yeah. think that's an easy position to have. Yeah, and, and like I said, it goes for both sides. You know, if you want to be this conservative, this you know, country loving individual, be my guest. Just don't force this shit on other people because that's when problems arise. You want to be, you know, you want you want to be a Christian? Fine, that's cool. You have the right to do so in this country. What you don't have the right to do is to force your beliefs on another person. You don't have that right to do that. So keep oh shit, keep your shit to yourself. Well, and also another thing about this Pelosi story that uh, I think is kind of getting, oh shit, I'm putting my, there we go. I think it's kind of getting lost in the weeds. Maybe some people see it, maybe some people don't. But um, you know, this the Sri Lanka. What happened in Sri Lanka recently, when the people of Sri Lanka literally stormed the capital, and not just January 6th style, you know, hung out there for a while and then left. Like, I, as far as I know, Sri Lanka, those people are still there. I, so, I have a question. I don't mean to cut you off. I have a question. No, yeah. The whole January 6th thing, I got, I, I got a problem with that. I don't understand. I'm four deep. I don't understand why people are so upset over that. That's that. That's that's my question. Like, 
I don't understand why everyone's so upset. Because they stormed the Capitol? I mean, nobody was upset when the Black Panthers did it. My thing is this. Ooh, Jen Psaki's on TV. All right. My thing is this. People are upset. Not people. The, the woke mob is what I'm going to call them. They're upset because they say, well, it was a terroristic act. You know what else is a terroristic act? Burning down a target. Rioting and looting is also a part of domestic terrorism. But we don't want to speak on that. Well, they, they stormed the Capitol. Yeah, because they were being screwed. And they knew they were being screwed. So what did they do? They went to the people who was fucking them. As you should. When you have a problem with someone, you go to the person you have a problem with, not the innocent people around them. If you feel like your government is fucking you, burning a Walmart and a Target is not the way to go. <laughs> it's not the way to go. It's not the, this, that's not the smartest decision to make. Because because every, every time you ask somebody, well, well, that don't belong to us. You're right. It doesn't. But you know what it does? You know who it does belong to? That mom that needed that job. That dad that was working there that was paying that, that place was paying his bills. It belongs to those people. They don't get shit for it. You burn, they don't get severance packages. They don't they don't see any of that money from the insurance companies. That should go straight to the company. So when you say, well, it, it, it don't mean it does, it means a lot. It means a lot. It means a lot to those people who who that was their fucking that's what that's what kept the lights on. It's kept food well, on the table. And I mean, you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm putting my foot in my mouth here. But if you want to talk about like value to an individual, uh, you know, the, the people whose jobs depended on that CVS, that Rite Aid, that what have you, they got burned down during an Antifa riot. Yeah. Those jobs probably mattered more to those people than rioting in literally the house of the people. I understand that, you know, Pelosi and Cruz and McConnell, all those guys hang out there. That is the house of the people. The capital, we elected those motherfuckers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't elect the manager of Walgreens. No, nope. I didn't elect the fucking guy. I write it. We elected the people at the Capitol. So if we are not satisfied with what's going on there, if we have not have our voices heard through voting and just the constant shit that we, you know, this could be a whole nother episode, obviously. But I mean, yeah, there's so many, there's so much to it for sure. There's a lot to it. And that's a lot to it. And that's, and that's the whole thing is for me is like that, that whole January 6th thing. I'm just like, it, it goes to show you how brainwashed these people are and how brainwashed the, some of these politicians have their constituents. It's like, well, we did you wrong. But why did you come after us? You should have went because if they went and started burning down neighborhoods, they wouldn't have cared. They wouldn't have batted an eye. But the moment well, you, you you go to us, oh, we had a problem. But you you no, you not you can't hold us accountable. I mean, in all fairness, right? I mean, we should at least bring up the side that would say there there's nothing to protest. Like, I mean, the 2020 elections were fair and square, and these people. <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to, you know. He wasn't listen, trying to do one fair and square. But. There is that side. I'm not, you know, if if you're unhappy with the election results, that's probably not the way that's to vote. A, that's the craziest way that they, how they swung that. Well, they're just mad with the election results. You, There's fucking video of y'all cheating. There's video. There's, there's video of Capitol officers letting people through the barricades. That there's, too. You know, that definitely happened. There's video of Ray Epps shouting out, we need to go into the Capitol, into the Capitol. And everyone around him is saying, no, no, Fed, Fed. And, you know, I, so there's that. There's a, like, lot, there is a lot to unpack. But that, the that, only that person that actually crazy. died on January 6th was Ashley Babbitt, a, a former military, you know, service member. Not and I think the reason that. why she died is because she they, they got a little too close to the people they were supposed to protect. She got shot in the neck. Yeah, I think that's the only reason why she died. I think because they got a little too close to the people they were protecting, and it was like, yeah, this shit's getting out of hand. So we gotta, we gotta take somebody. We right. gotta make sure they don't get through this fucking door. 
So, so yeah, I mean, and then so so obviously that that day in itself, right, whole mess. And then trying to link this event to that event, in my opinion, it's it's just trying to because what they're doing with this whole, I can't believe you know this person didn't condone and that person didn't condone. Like, you recognize America is pissed. You recognize the the pendulum is really swinging towards the people about to make a move on your asses so this is like we need to put all the stories out there that anyone who thinks that violence against us is crazy and they're going to go to prison for as long as it takes even if they trespass in the capital they're going to go to prison so that anyone who tries to get answers out of us and anyone who tries to hold us accountable you know and listen i'm not a a violence guy i believe and i tr- i would like to believe in the process of voting I would like to believe that that is actually a way to go. We've had decades of proof that, you know, <laughs> the people don't exactly win out in the end. So I don't know what to tell you after a while. Like the people are crying out and you're not answering them. And there was a very famous person who was nonviolent to the end. And he was assassinated for it. His name was Martin Luther King Jr. And he got no favors for being fucking nonviolent. So. It's, it's something's gonna happen. Something's gonna break. Gonna it, it, I, I don't condone it, but like this idea, I know what you're doing. Let me just say that I know what you're doing. <laughs> Let me leave it there. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how things how things play out in the next in in the coming years. But as for now, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Let's talk about some. Uh, you want to talk college or? Pro for we'll college real quick. We can touch on college. College, okay. college. Uh, college was a fun. It, was, it wasn't that fun this weekend. It, it wasn't that fun. Um, but I did see that. How about that? This, this here. Not off the press. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little nervous for this week. So for those of you just listening, because I hate to only cater to the YouTube uh, audience. You know, catch us on YouTube, but also catch us, you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever. Uh, right now, we just had the official top six. Well, I don't know why it's top six, but top six rankings come out today. I'm a little nervous about this. I'm we a- have. Why is Clemson up there? I just noticed Clemson was there. Why the fuck is Clemson up there? Crimson Tide checking in at number six. The Michigan Wolverines checking in at number five. The Clemson Tigers. Uh, what not be there at eight? No, checking in at number four. The all these teams except for Alabama undefeated, by the way. Um, Clemson should not be there. Georgia I, I, Bulldogs, I <laughs> number three, Ohio State, number two, and the Tennessee Volunteers coming off that 44 to six ass whooping on Kentucky. I am so New nervous York. to play them next week. I'm so nervous to play them this week. I, I'm, I hope. Kirby Smart is going to pull every piece of coaching he has out of his ass. Because if he doesn't, we get our asses handed to us on Saturday. It's going to be that simple. The undefeated. So this from Heather Dinich. Dinich. Uh, sorry, Heather. Undefeated Tennessee are in the number one spot in the college football playoffs initial top 25 ranking on Tuesday, marking the first time in the program's history it cracked the top four, followed by number two, Ohio State, number three, Georgia, and number four, Clemson. Mm-mm-mm. This is Alabama's getting back into the top four. I'm just going to be honest with you. Alabama's getting back in the top four. Of course. It, it, there's no way to avoid it. They don't have their hardest test with Tennessee. Now they can just blow everybody else out, win out, and then make it to Atlanta. So we had NC State uh, over Virginia Tech last Thursday, Utah over Washington State, Um, Georgia. I got to go to this game next year, dude. I'm so bummed. Like, I didn't. You should should go. The game is. I need to go. It's a great game, and 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 we 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 I at some point I was watching I was watching a game and we were up twenty eight I think we were at twenty seven or something, and I'm like oh cool this is gonna be a you know quick blowout, and then for whatever reason we just 
gave up 17 points. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all doing? And thankfully, thankfully, we were able to put it together and finish the game strong. But I see, like, defensively, if we make the same fucking fucking bonehead plays we made against Florida, we get nice. It's torched by Tennessee. And that's, that's not even going to be a question. How about Brock Bowers, man? This guy. Dude, Brock Bowers is a guarantee number one drop. He will be number one. 154 and at he's about, I think he's going to be – he's probably going to be – You if, if you if he's available early – and you need an offensive weapon, you can't pass him up. They kind of use him. I mean, he's kind of like a taste of pill, right? Bro, they, use him on, the they, use him on, they use him on jet sweeps, fly routes, posts, digs, screens, whatever you can. He, he's a tight end but runs like a receiver. Lord. He has great – his hands are – he has great hands. He can catch damn near anything. Um and then they, it's just which one of those things, dude. He he's an athlete, and he's gonna he's he's gonna he's gonna play ten. He, he's gonna be a George Kittle, Travis Kelsey type. He, his yeah, block, he does. His, and he's and the thing is, he, he can block too. That's the good thing about it. He can block too, so he he's gonna have value. Stetson Bennett on the other hand. I think I, I think he needs to have some surgery or something. I think he needs the surgery Jameis Winston had because I don't know what the fuck he'd be looking at half the time. Oh, really? Yeah, he he makes some dumbass plays, and it would piss me off, dude. I was, he, if we lose to Tennessee, he's going to be the reason we lose to Tennessee. Um, you had Ohio State defeating number thirteen Penn State. Uh, 44 to 31. Marvin Harrison Jr., man, he looks good. 10 catches, 185 yards. Just one of many talented Ohio State receivers right now. Ohio State is – they are Alabama, basically. In, oh, the in Big the, Ten? Yeah. In their Big Ten. In their Big Ten. They, who – no one's beating them. No one's – Michigan – this is one – this is the craziest thing about Michigan. If you watch Michigan, they don't throw the ball. At no. all. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very minimum. Speaking of throwing the ball, look what this this man he went 17 for what 30 for 215 yards. Yeah, that's that's uh Michigan State. Oh, that's Michigan, and that's a Michigan State quarterback. So that's <laughs> not even a Michigan quarterback. The Michigan quarterback is not even there. Yeah. If you stop Michigan's run, the ball game's over. Props like, to uh just Corum, like this kid you were talking about, right though. Yeah, just like Georgia did last year. Georgia, when they played them in the playoffs, we stopped the run. You stop the run, you blow them out because they can't throw the ball. Michigan is they, – they are a one-trick pony. What's happening in baseball? I'm watching the uh, the midterm <laughs> covers they're doing oh. right now. And Chuck Todd's, like, pointing at this specific county in Indiana. It's, it's – uh, I, I love it, dude. I – Something about the political season. It's, it's it shouldn't be entertainment. entertainment. It, it, you should pay more, you know, serious attention to it. But just watching the way these people break it down, it becomes like sports. So, well, Michigan, Michigan, it, they have a weakness, and you just have to stop. You just gotta, you gotta figure out how to stop the run. If you stop the run, and you make that quarterback throw the ball, it's a done deal. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be in game for him. Well, now. Speaking of the World Series, <laughs> uh, Phillies are up seven zip, bottom of the fifth. Phillies winning the four. Philly, Phillies are winning the World Series this year. Like there's no, the Astros not gonna have a chance. Phillies are I winning. Mean, we, Phillies are winning the World Series. Bryce Harper homer, and they haven't turned back since. Yeah, Phillies are winning the World Series this year, and and that's just it. The they they're not doing that. The Houston Astros not going. They're not doing. It. TCU is a TCU. They're gonna be a problem. They, I feel like they need to get a little bit more respect than what they're getting. They're at number seven right now. Because um, you think about it, if you look at it right now, Ohio, Ohio State and Michigan still has to play. Obviously, Georgia and Tennessee has to play. Mm-hmm. So two teams are going to drop out. Right. And I don't know. I feel like 
the only problem is, is that there's not in. I mean, Syracuse was the only team I probably could see beating uh, Clemson. Because I don't think North. I think I, I don't see North Carolina doing that. Just North the, Carolina uh, usually put up a fight, but I, I don't see. I don't see that happening. Oh wow, there they are. Great Notre Dame. Great. Didn't even see yeah, that. I did see that. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh man! So Oregon, hopefully with a new governor soon. Just get out. Really Bo Nix. Uh, I'm to tell you, Bo Nix is the quarterback. Woo, He's the Bo Nix, four twelve and three tutties. Bo Nix is that guy. He's not playing SEC teams. <laughs> Bo Nix is that guy. Okay, you keep him in Oregon. If you keep him away from SEC teams, you're gonna have he, you're gonna have a problem with your hands. That yeah, number. Number nine, Oklahoma State putting up a goose egg against Fucking 22 ranked Kansas State. Fucking embarrassing. Hey, come on, a goose egg? Come on. 48 to zip against the Wildcats. The fucking Wildcats. As far as I, I know, had, still, I, had Ohio State, I had Oklahoma State winning that game, and they go in there and lay up a fucking goose egg. Doesn't Kansas State still run like wing T or something? They, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they run something. Oh, uh, number 10, Wake Forest going okay. down 21 48 against Louisville. Yikes. Wake Forest is bullshit. <laughs> uh, number, bullshit. Also, number 10, USC winning 45 37 over Arizona. Number 12, UCLA never had a problem with Stanford. Uh, oh. 15th ranked Ole Miss getting one over the Texas AM Aggies 31 28. Notre Dame in Syracuse. They ever since they lost to to Ohio, who did they lose? They lost to Clemson. They ain't been the same since. Yeah, I mean, it's just what can you say? I mean, they're they are a better team than they've been. They're just not that team yet. So they'll they'll get there at some point. They'll get there. Dino's got them heading the right direction. Um, Illinois over Nebraska. Nebraska. Uh, UCF apparently upsetting 20th ranked Cincinnati 25 21. Uh, North Carolina takes down Pittsburgh and they Missouri. Play Clemson, don't they? North Ooh. Carolina. Oh, do they? I think so. I think they, I mean, if they do, I think they may have a chance, but uh, nobody cares about Missouri and South Carolina. Who knew the game? I didn't know the game cocks are five and three. New yeah, season. they are. Winning record. Hey, hey. This, hey. this 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 week is gonna be it's gonna be stressful for me. Like we we, we play fucking Tennessee. Uh, I think we're at home, which is probably a good thing for us. So, um, I switched to NFL scores, but we're still today, on news. Forget today, it. Forget today, banner, folks. today in NFL is it was a day. Okay? How about it, dude? There's a lot of goddamn trades. It was a lot of people who wasn't traded, who wanted to be traded. Um, Brandon Cooks, notably. Definitely Brandon Cooks. I don't understand what the Texans are doing with him. Like, just fucking trade him. Just you, I mean, he's been traded for a first-round pick for, like, the last five years. My, <laughs> can, my thing is, about him. if I'm a GM, I'm trade. If you don't want to be here, I'm going to let you go. It's just that simple. I mean, especially if you're not like a top performer. Like, obviously, Brandon Cooks is probably the best, the best thing going for that offense. Right. And I can see them not wanting to let it go, but right. you, you got to do something. Like, you, you got to figure it out. This is a and young team rebuilding. Yeah. They could have used the draft picks. I, fucking yes. I'm like, listen. I'm listening. Like, give me a second and a third, and y'all can have it. Yep. Green Bay. If you're a Green Bay Packers fan, Oof. and you watch that game on Sunday, oh. and your team did not make <laughs> an effort to trade for a wide receiver, you need to go and burn that whole fucking stadium down. Mm -hmm. Period. Burn the fucking stadium. Burn the practice field. Burn the whole goddamn organization down. Like, where is the sense of urgency? You, you have one of the best quarterbacks of all time. 
Aaron Aaron Jones, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he I think he led. I think he had he had majority of the fucking touches. Receiving, running. Romeo Dobbs had a great catch in the back of the end zone. Robert Tunyon fucking shit the bed and cost them the cost them a touchdown. It, it's the whole the whole thing, they're in shambles. And then you just lost Kristen Watts Watson, what was his name? Yeah. You yeah. just lost him to a concussion. Yeah. You don't have receivers. Green Bay. You don't have receivers. Brandon Cooks is available. You don't use first round draft picks on skilled players anyway, so you might as well get fucking rid of it. I mean, he's saying he's available. The Texans are saying he's available. So what the fuck happened? <laughs> Green Bay, you don't yeah. have receivers. Jacksonville even traded for a suspended receiver. So, okay, let's get to that one. Because this one kills me. You have Jacksonville, who just paid Christian Kirk the most money that any wide receiver made this last offseason. Mm-hmm. Zay Jones who most people couldn't tell you where he went to college. Right. Uh, made a shit ton of money thanks to the Jacksonville Jaguars this past mm-hmm. offseason. And after paying those two players boatloads of cash, they said, you know what? Would complete this? A suspended player. Right. <laughs> That's how you know your investments have not gone well. It's- when you would rather have a guy you haven't seen play this year. Well, here's the thing. if you If you think about it, if you think about it the other way, so we clearly know this season's over. They're not winning anything. Trevor Lawrence can't tra- can't can't stop turning the fucking ball over. I don't know. Is it like has anyone oh, in the AFC South? Has the t- anyone the in the AFC South Titans. really claimed it? Yeah, the Titans. You did you see Derrick Henry on Sunday? I mean, I saw Malik Willis come in. Maybe that's an opening for the rest of the division. Did, 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 did you see? Did you did you see Derrick Henry on Sunday? The man is unhuman, inhuman. Okay. Yeah. And, if you didn't see, and if you didn't see him on Sunday, I don't know how he didn't get random drug tested, but AJ Brown did. And if you didn't see Derrick Henry on Sunday, if you played him in fantasy, you definitely saw that ass weapon. Just saying. The thing is, they got to add Kamara. The Jacksonville Jaguars, they know their season's done. They know that. And if it's not done, they know it's close to being done. They know they they already know this. Christian Kirk was a waste of money. I would have never pay Christian Kirk that type of money. Amari Cooper, yes. Erlen Robinson, yes. Christian Kirk, Christian Kirk didn't do shit in Arizona. No. What made you think that he was going to be spectacular for your team? No. I hope. So now they had to go out and it's like, okay, we fudged up. But we're going to swing it like we're going to get this suspended receiver and we'll have him for next year. That way we don't really have to draft a receiver. That way we can use that pick on something else, like maybe a quarterback. We all know they won't draft a quarterback, but hell, they just trade away James Robinson to fucking the Jets. So now what are you going to do? Well, I mean, ETN has been. I mean, ETN has been killing it, but don't get me wrong. But at the same time, they, I just, they, and the thing is, they didn't have to give up much for him. And and I feel like we got shafted in this whole fucking process. I most definitely believe we got shafted for this. We didn't get nothing for Matt Ryan. We didn't get nothing for Julio Jones. We didn't get nothing for Calvin Ridley. I'm like, what the fuck? Are y'all just say, all right, listen, it's it's a fire sale. First come, first serve. First come, first serve. Like, give us your best, you, give us your best offer. Yeah, you know, the Jags wide receiver group has been pretty interesting the last couple of years. I mean, obviously they, you know, they traded away LaVisca Chenault and they've been, they, I mean, they've gotten the, they've been really ringing the rag that is Marvin Jones. I mean, he still puts up numbers for them. So he's boo boo. He, he was, I, they need to let him go. I mean, they, they've put Laquan Treadwell out there. So they've definitely tried a few different things. Um, hopefully this is the one that, Really Kelvin really, in. Kelvin really is going to work for him. He's going to solidify that number one spot. Yeah. They're just, they're just going to have to find a number two. And I don't think Christian Kirk is a number two. You know who just popped up in my head? Who? Oh, 
was talking about um, David DePap on. <laughs> anyway, um, you remember Matt Jones, the Arkansas quarterback slash wide receiver that played for the Jags for a little while? Yep. Yeah, he was a character. Yeah, he just popped up in my head. Yeah, Dave. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I guess they really felt the need to have him. So, hey, it it, it, clear, it clears the cap space for us, and they get a suspended receiver. Oh, 2023 Falcons! I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. Like, uh, this is a this is a just clean slate to start from complete zero. Like, hey, listen, this is our first year. The first this is the first full season where uh, our GM and our head coach were able to make our actual draft decisions, and they did pretty good. Um, Dean Pease is doing great things with our defense. We just got to we our secondary just been bit by the injury bug and that's the problem we're having yeah um other than that our offense we need another wide out we need a, we need somebody a number 2 a solid number 2 um and we got to throw the ball more the run game we got the run game locked it's we already knew Arthur Smith can he can get a run game going but we got to be yeah. able to use that shit in other ways so We'll see. We'll get more into that once we get to the scores. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, the, with I'm Naeem Peter, Hines, this uh, Naeem Hines going to the Buffalo Bills. That was a surprise. The it biggest, was a surprise. And do you think this affects James Cook or Singletary? Devin James Singletary Cook. more. James Cook. Me too. Yeah, somebody tried to say Singletary, and it's like, no, like this no, is like no. James Cook's specialty was supposed to be catching the ball, yeah. and they went out and got a guy who catches the ball. Yeah, James Cook is in trouble. Yeah. James Cook is severely in trouble. If okay. you have him on a, in the fantasy as a flex, you might want to go ahead and bench him because he's not going to see a lot of field time. Because Naeem Himes, when, with his specialty in Indianapolis, was this, to come in, third down, catch the, catch screens, out of, catch passes out of the backfield. That's, his, that's what he does. He lines up. He can line up outside. He can run routes. He adds a lot more value than James Cook does. So yeah. um, Buffalo, they simply have decided that the combination of Singletary and Josh Allen is more than enough running the ball. So they just need someone who is going to run good routes, securely catch the ball out of the backfield. And, and Naeem Hines you know, can pass block too. He can do that. I'm not saying James Cook can't. He's only a rookie. But this is a, a playoff bound team. And clearly, they just want to have depth and a guy who can definitely do what they're asking him to do. James James Cook is definitely he's definitely getting pushed back to the three spot. That's yeah. Sure. yeah, that's that's for sure. I don't I don't know whoever said Singletary is in trouble is fucking retarded. Yeah, yeah. you know some some rando in a, in a group I man. You know what? Yeah, whoever said it was a fucking idiot. There's Devin Singletary is nowhere close to being in trouble. This and is a James Cook problem. While we're while we're taking shots at uh, random people, how about how about this? Uh, I think Michelle Magigook is your name on Twitter. Always hyping up Zach Moss. Well, now are you finally ready to admit that Zach Moss's fantasy relevance is dead? He, he was, was traded as a throwaway <laughs> piece in this deal to the Colts. He will now be behind Jonathan Taylor with absolutely no role on this team other than to be an injury fill-in for Jonathan Taylor. So are you finally ready to admit that your take on Zach Moss being this fantasy set-the-world-on-fire running back is over? The only reason why they, they said that is because they saw what he did last year. Um, and a lot of his points, a lot of his fantasy points came from inside the five he was he was that he was that he was that back. He was the back that they came in. We inside the five, we need to punch it in. Devin Singletary, Devin Singletary didn't have the power, so we're gonna put Zach Moss in and let him get in. That was it. He didn't really do a lot of spectacular things. I know because I picked him up last year in one of my in my fantasy league, and he he kind of shit the bed for me a couple of times. So um that was a shocker, but my biggest shock for me was Chase Claypool. I didn't understand that one. 
I, I didn't. I did not understand why would the the Pittsburgh Steelers trade away their best wideout. Oh, uh, who's better than he is? Uh, Deontay Johnson. Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> bullshit. 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 All right. No way. No fucking way. If you if you believe that you're on drugs. I mean, Deontay Johnson is not better than. I think two things can be true. I think I can have a pretty good opinion and be on drugs at the same time. Bullshit. Deontay Johnson is not better than Chase Claypool. You All sir. Right. On drugs. Okay, I would. I think we'll take a poll, and probably, you know, I'm sure I would come out on top of that. But Chase Claypool route running is better. His hands are better. Deontay Johnson has had problems with catching the ball for the last couple of years. He was notorious for dropping the ball. What are you talking about? And yet, if you look at their numbers, Deontay Johnson has like a hundred catches the past three years, and Chase Claypool has like I don't know. Bullshit. It's fucking bullshit! It's fucking bullshit! It's fucking bullshit! I mean, look, I mean, I get that you know, uh, I guess numbers aren't always the story, but if you want to look at actual catches, Deontay Johnson has way more than Chase Claypool since he's been in the league. Chase Claypool is the better wideout. Why? Chase Claypool is a bigger, faster. Stronger, hands are better. Is a bigger, stronger athlete than Deontay Johnson. You're going to see that Pittsburgh Deontay Steelers Johnson gets open more often and drops the ball more often and catches the ball more often. The <laughs> bullshit. You're going to because see he that has Pittsburgh. more catches than Chase Claypool. You're going to see this Pittsburgh offense struggle. They've already been struggling. You're going to see them struggle even more without Chase Claypool. You think? Chase Claypool has made that much of a difference for Pittsburgh that all they of a sudden be, they wouldn't be Tampa without him. This offense that has already Deontay, been struggling. Where was, where was struggle Deontay more. Johnson? Where was Deontay Johnson when they were beating Pitts when they would beat the Bucks? Nowhere to be found. He didn't do shit against the Dolphins. He he he. I'm, I I I think it was a surprise for me for them to trade Chase Claypool, but you know what? I think Mike Tom is like, hey, fire me. I want to be fired. Please fire me at the end of the year. Please fire I, me. You know what? I hope you're right, and I hope that Chase Claypool is – I hope that Chase Claypool he, is, is just Chicago? the answer that the Chicago Bears have He's been not- looking for, and Chicago's passing game just all of a sudden takes off because Chase Claypool has now arrived onto the scene. Justin Fields is the problem in Chicago. No, I'm sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. The offensive coordinator is the problem in Chicago. You can't make this. You can't make Justin Fields stand in the pocket and try to throw the ball. It's not his game. It's fair. Move him around. You got to make him do things. You saw what he did against uh, the Patriots. That was probably his best game of the season. And then for whatever reason, they reverted back to what they what was causing them to lose against the Cowboys. So, uh, and then their defense is shit too. So we gotta address that elephant in the room as well. Uh, Steelers? Nah, Chicago. But Pittsburgh's defense is shit too. I think even with TJ back. I think with TJ. I mean, I guess they gotta get TJ Watt back. Yeah. It's 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 because you saw the difference. It's it's night and fucking day. It It shouldn't be just one guy that makes that much of a difference, but apparently. it's night and fucking day, dude. Like, without TJ Watt, they ain't shit. They've lost every game except one since, since he's been out. But speaking of Pittsburgh, they made a move today that I'm a big fan of. Uh, swapped some late-round picks and got William Jackson the third from the Washington Commies. So I, I like that. Why? I, why? Why did he? Why? Uh, they're I young. Think- they're, they're banged up. I feel like the back end's fine. I mean, Minka Fitzpatrick is still playing like a fucking maniac. Um, it. I think they pass rush is the issue, because like I said, without T.J. Watt, they don't. They can't pressure the quarterback. Yeah, they could definitely use some more pressure. I, I'd have. I'd have traded for some. I'd have traded for something. But I mean, if you want to show up, I mean, you can always. You can never. You can never have too many corners. 
Well, speaking of trading for a pass rusher, how about the Miami Dolphins getting Bradley Chubb? Miami Dolphins is like, I feel like they're in win now mode at this point. Definitely. And, and I also think they're trying to cover up the debacle of the Tua concussion shit. <laughs> they're trying to bury. I think they're trying to bury that shit. Like, we don't need to answer questions about that anymore. Um, they would love to have that be forgotten about. Melvin Ingram, Bradley Chubb, they're gonna, it's going to be a problem. They, they, they're they most definitely going to have – they're going to be a problem on defense. I think they still have Agba, I think. Mm, yes. Emmanuel Agba, I want to say he's still there. Yeah. I feel like I heard his name recently, but – um. So they they got they got a team they their defense their front seven is good. Jalen Phillips out of Miami, I like him a lot. They're back. Their their corners are good too. Xavier Howard, he he's good. He he is like oh, he, man. He'll, he'll take out he'll take out half the field. Javon Holland, they'll get me started. Yeah, so they, like they they got talent. Um they just I think they felt like they needed another pass rusher to help them. Get over that hump. I mean, they're I mean, trying to compete with Buffalo, and you gotta compete with I don't Buffalo. know if you've watched Von Miller play lately, but my God, that guy what? is still, still playing. You know, I yeah, think still Dre. They definitely, definitely, definitely got lucky in the first game. I don't think they're gonna be so lucky next game. I, 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 think, game? That, I think that Buffalo Dolphins game is gonna be, is gonna be, it's gonna be a huge matchup. But I, I think Buffalo's gonna remember what the fuck happened in week in was it week one or week two, and they definitely gonna come out with some some fire for that ass, folks. Right now I'm watching on MSNBC an advertisement for Pfizer's new RSV vaccine for infants. I'm not saying not to take it. I'm just saying, talk to your doctor. Always talk to your doctor. Okay. Now that that's out of the way. Yes, Miami getting Bradley Chubb is huge. Boy. I mean, offensive weapons. Defensive weapons. Dude, that offense is. And, and here's the thing. I don't think Tua is going to be the quarterback next year. Wow. Okay. The reason why I say that is his arm strength is a problem. Yes, definitely. It's a major problem. And you saw it in the Pittsburgh game. You saw it. You saw it. Uh, what in the preseason. You saw it in preseason. You saw it. You saw You, you saw, saw it. it again. Like, you see it every week. He cannot hit Tyreek in stride. Every yeah. deep ball Tyreek has to come back for. Yeah. And the thing is this. If you're a corner, it's Tyreek Hill. Absolutely, you got a whole ass, but you also got to remember, there's t- there's two are throwing him the ball, so this ball is gonna be short. And I see oh, every, every damn near every deep ball he's thrown to Tyreek has been short. Let's say you're in charge of the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. You're looking for a guy with a cannon of an arm. What are you willing to trade for Carson Wentz? Fuck nothing. Nothing. I man, I shit my hands and clap before I trade for Carson Wentz. <laughs> you hear me? I would never. I would. I would tear both my ACLs and run a lap before I fucking trade for Carson Wentz. Okay. Taylor Heineke is out playing Carson Wentz what? at this very moment. You can't just hit me with a line like that, dude. Shit my hands and clap. That's fucking great. How's that the first time I've ever heard that? Okay. Uh, There's no way I would trade uh, for Carson Wentz. Taylor Heineke, is, Taylor Heineke is under. He's won two straight so far since he's oh. been in the starting lineup. Grab a Heineke. It's his job. Goodbye. <laughs> if, you have, if you have Terry McLaurin, start him with Taylor Heineke <laughs> as a starting QB. Please start him because if oh not, God. don't wait for Carson to come back because we already seen that shit. Yeah, Carson Wentz is dog shit. He is a terrible quarterback. Getting okay? my hands and clap, dude. That was fucking great. He, oh. he, 
He is awful. He's a terrible quarterback, and he should not be a quarterback. There are people who disagree. I don't. He's getting outplayed by Taylor Heineke right now. That's a problem. Man. Um, if anything, I'm looking at Jacoby Brissett. Um, Gardner Minshew. There's a there's there's a few other guys that I would pick. Tua has Tua is he's not a bad quarterback, but his arm strength is a problem. That and actually has been kind of interesting. I haven't heard a peep about Minshew recently. He's he, he played he played a little bit on Sunday. Obviously, they were blowing the Steelers' asses out, but he played a little bit on 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 Sunday. But there's I I could I can't do I can't do Tua I can't. I can't, his arm strength is a problem for me. Like, do you yeah. understand? Like, you have Tyreek Hill. If you catch him in stride, it's a touchdown every time. Like, there's just there's no way. Like, I could not, I could see because there's been times where Patrick Mahomes, he's short, he threw it short, but that was because he was scrambling and he had to get the ball out. Right. But if he's standing straight up, he's not that he can't throw the ball. He there's no he can't get the, he can't do it. He can't make that throw. Even when he like you know, crow hops into the thing and it's still it's 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 still short. It still ends up being short and it's gonna cause a problem. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Or either that or someone's gonna realize like this shit's short and I'm picking this off. He's like uh he's like the island Chad Pennington. But I, I uh think, I don't I don't think I don't think I just don't see I feel like they're gonna keep him but I if I was the GM of Miami, I wouldn't keep. I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider him my future. Like you're not going to win championships with Tua. I just. Yeah, I would definitely be looking for a guy. You know, one of those development type backups who has an arm. If we can just, you know, rain in this, rain in really, this. All you need is all you need is above an above average quarterback. You have got the talent around him. You got Mike Kosicki. You got okay. Jalen Waddle. You have. Uh, Tyreek Hill, your run game with Mostert is picking up. Your defense is keeping you, and the defense is helping you. You yeah. just need an above. You just need a guy like you get a guy like Gardner Minshew, or you get a guy like Jacoby Brissett to come in and take reins of this fucking offense. That's a done deal. You ain't got nothing to worry about. You see what Jacoby Brissett is doing right now in Cleveland? He ain't got shit but Nick Chubb. Nate, how do you feel about? A team like the Detroit Lions trading their former first round pick tight end TJ Hawkinson to a division rival in the Minnesota Vikings for a second and fourth round pick. Oh no. Give me give me give me give me one give me give me one second. One, one second. Oh you got it. This 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 right here. When I saw it, I was like what the fuck? Of course. And not just what the fuck, but the Vikings? This is a team that has spent a couple first round picks on guys like Charles Rogers, uh, Mike Williams. The fucking Vikings? Eric Ebron. Yeah. The uh, fucking Vikings. Javid Best, I believe, was the first yes, one. Yes, Javid Best was another one. Why the fuck? What is what? What is wrong with this organization? In all fairness, what what what's wrong with the Detroit Lions? Man, what, what's what's wrong? Here's what I'll say, real quick, because T.J. Hawkinson has played out of four seasons. He's played one full season in the NFL. And I don't believe he's ever, you know, cracked a thousand yards or caught a hundred passes, anything like that. So, in my humble opinion, getting a second and fourth round pick for him is pretty good. Trading him to the Vikings, though, I mean, there was no other suitors. Listen to me, okay? <laughs> you gotta look at this. T.J. Hawkins has been in the league what? Three years? Two four. years? Three? Four years? Yep. In those four years, he's had 
No help at outside at the wideout position. None. The run game, none. He they just got a run game with DeAndre Swift and uh with the other guy that's there now. The quarterback play has been shit at best. Yeah. With, between uh Matthew Stafford and what's his face. So you send him to, yeah. You send him to a team, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson. They have a pretty good goddamn offensive line. You got uh Cook in the backfield with Kirk Cousins. Who the fuck does that? Who loads up their enemy? <laughs> We'll That's see. Right. I mean, maybe they maybe they felt like this is a very expendable guy. I mean, look. That's yeah. like, and then the, here's the fucked up thing. Irv Smith just went down for eight to ten weeks. Oh. So now. I'm not paying enough attention thrown, to my Yahoo League. He's going to get thrust into the offense. So now he has. My Yahoo Leagues are suffering. So now he has. Two great wideouts. He is a good running back and a good line with an above average quarterback. That, <laughs> this shit is gonna blow up in Detroit's face. Well, good thing Irv Smith was a bi week fill in. <laughs> Note to self: Drop Irv Smith. <laughs> he he's going to thrive in this offense. I hope you're right. I personally think this is going to be a win for the Lions. I think that getting this kind of return for him at, you know, after again, I, one single full season of mediocre production, a it, decent production. Can you, can you blame the mediocre production? And that's the thing, right? We're going to find out because you've said it, Kirk Cousins' experience. Weapons on the outside, you know, um, supposedly innovative OC. So if if Hawkinson's going to prove his worth, it should be this team, right? So we'll find out. I, I believe he I believe he's going to thrive in his offense. I believe he's going to make a big-ass impact, especially in the middle of the field, with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen on the outside. He's going to make – he's going to make a huge – impact delvin cook is gonna it it's just gonna be it's gonna be a big ass problem they're already at the top of the division and you just, <laughs> that's like that that would be like me knowing i'm finna go fight this dude and i'm i'm gonna, I'm gonna stop by his house weeks in advance hey here's a little extra help to beat me like what the fuck does that i don't know you just you just gave them extra firepower. You know, I guarantee you, everybody in Minnesota right now is ecstatic right now for their offense. You think so? I absolutely. Abs and the thing, crazy thing is, they've not had great tight end play this season. Irv no. Smith, I think he's caught maybe a couple touchdowns, maybe one right. or two. Yeah, it's been average. Yeah. Yeah. So now you get in a you get a. a and a stud at tight end to come in, get the fuck out of here. It, it's going to be a problem. It, it's it's going to be a big-ass problem. And Detroit, you need to join the Packers. Y'all need to burn the fucking stadium, the practice facility, and y'all need to, to fucking crucify your entire organization because this is bullshit. Well, I'll say this, uh, especially for, you know, fantasy players in Detroit. Uh if you are a DeAndre Swift owner, holy shit, what a frustrating year, dude. <laughs> Anytime Swift is even healthy, it's like he still has given up touchdowns to Jamal Williams. Exactly. What the hell, man? I mean, what a frustrating <laughs> guy to have on your team. A guy who is fully healthy and still can't. Every time it's like, oh, Jamal Williams, three touchdowns. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I mean, hey, listen. This is where it's at. this is where it's at. Um I I I just I bad organizations are just bad in general. 
Like, I actually am, I guess, a little surprised, right, that there were no quarterback trades. I mean, seemed like there could have been movement here and there. I mean, who would who would who would move? That's, I mean, that's who a great would, question. Who would really need? Who would really benefit? Because I feel like right now the quarterback position is really solid. <laughs> I mean, outside of Joe Burrow shit in the bed last night and costing me my fantasy matchup, um, but we won't talk on it, speak about that. Um, I mean, who really needs a quarterback? No, yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, uh, Indy is probably going to see what they have in Sam Ellinger for the rest of the season. He played pretty well yesterday. Oh, yep. Sunday. He, he played. Yep. He, he played. He played within the the confines of the play of the. Of the game plan, like he didn't Washington. do anything. He didn't do anything too spe- spectacular, but it was against the Commanders, so. Yeah, and that same, you know, that same game, Washington's probably gonna bounce between Heineke and uh, Wentz. Well, so listen to me. I am not putting Carson Wentz bum ass back in the game. Taylor Heineke is my quarterback to the end of the season. I am not. If I'm Ron Rivera. I am not putting. That fucking guy back in at all. I'm gonna let we're gonna ride Taylor Heineke. That's what we're gonna do. He won he's won two straight since he, he's been here. I'm not I know I'm not doing that. I'm not doing the shit. Did you watch Thursday night's game? I did. What did you think? Tampa Bay looks awful. Oh offensively, they look horrible. Their God. defense. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. That defense is still elite. The problem is when they're on the field as much as they were, you get tired and then you start to crack. <laughs> this is a Baltimore Ravens team that did not have Mark Andrews or Rashad Bateman for most of the game. Exactly. And, and they still, still won 27-22. You you still in Tampa lost, Bay. You you lost to the Ravens without their best tight end. They didn't. They they ran the the, the run game was was killing them. All they had to do was a sweep to Devin Duvernay. It worked every time. Hey, I you know what's crazy? I picked up Devin Duvernay uh, like right before. I think the I think Wednesday I picked him up. I was like, fuck, I need a receiver, and he was available. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try this. And sure as shit, it paid out for me. But yeah, no. The not temp- exactly sure Andrew's status, but if you are an Andrew's owner, I mean, definitely pick up Isaiah Likely in the meantime. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, they're done. They, you you can go ahead and you, we can put them away. It uh, looks Tom, bad, man. It looks real bad. Tom Brady is finished. He threw 40, two, 26 for 44, 325 in the touchdown. Yeah, that's that's that, that's not, no. It looks nice, but it definitely didn't tell the story. And the only touchdown came to Julio. Right. So, so Buccaneers are in serious trouble. Uh, I think Atlanta's in the lead with like a oh yeah, we lead the division. Hundred record. Yeah, we lead the division. Don't worry about that. We'll talk yeah. about that later though. Um, uh, we had our London game, which I do enjoy football in the morning. The Broncos or a bad there. Nathaniel Hackett has for to you be Texans. Fired. This is eight thirty in the morning. Nathaniel Hackett has to be fired. He has to. There's no way he survives to next season. There's no way you bring him back next year. Tim Tim McGraw's a Phillies fan? Hey, you you learned some things. You cannot cannot say Nathaniel Hackett is our coach. Like, the Broncos have looked bad all year. (laughs) They, They beat a Jacksonville team that beat themselves, to be honest. If you really want to be honest, they beat themselves. Uh, ETN had a great game in this losing effort, and the entire Broncos offense looked like shit. Straight shit. I don't know how they won. Uh, somehow they managed to play well. They they managed to play a little bit better than Jack. A, uh, a last minute Latavius Murray touchdown, and then some shenanigans at the end. This shit here. And this shit here had me oh. fucking stressed out. Oh, Nate, what a game. This game here had me stressed the fuck out. You would I, think. I knew. Marcus Mariota versus Philip Walker would be just an absolute snooze fest. Nope. Not even Little close. did you know. It would come down to a last second Hail Mary. I, 
I knew that game was over. Okay? I knew it was over. The moment he caught that ball, I knew this game was over. Even when he took his helmet off and they threw a flag, I was like, we did it again. We gave up the game. We somehow figured out a way to shit the bed again. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm stressed and I'm like, I'm about to hear this shit again. Oh, the fact was choked again. Blah, 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 blah. And the kicker missed a 48 yard extra point. <laughs> I was in complete <laughs> disbelief. <laughs> and I was like, yes, we have another shot. Dude, we get the ball at overtime. Marcus fucking Mariota decides, I'm going to throw up a fucking duck. Interception, the guy returns it to inside the 20. <laughs> I'm like, this fucking game is over. Oh my God. I'm like, we didn't lost again. <laughs> he shakes it. <laughs> Last second. I am in dis- the DJ Moore touchdown should have never happened. I am in disbelief. Uh. He shanked it again. I'm like, I was like, no way. <laughs> this is Pinheiro, like, no right? Way. I was like, there's no I, like right when they lined, I was like, there's no way he missing this kick. This is this is this is a chip shot. And he pushed it left. I'm like, I said, like, there's no way. <laughs> and then for whatever reason, Marcus Mariota pulled his head out of his ass. And this guy here won us the game. <sighs> this guy here, they need to pay him. A lot of money. Cocoa Puffs, baby. I would if I had a weak heart, I'd probably be in in the (laughs) ER right now. That game stressed me out from beginning to end. Stressed me. (laughs) I was like, I was like, what's in the fuck? Two like easy kicks you should better make in your sleep. Any other kicker in the league, we lose that game before overtime. But he, when he, sh- I was like, "Oh my God, he shanked it!" I was like, "Thank God he shanked it." But I mean, just the stats alone. I mean, all Panthers leading in the categories, and <laughs> yet yeah, Falcons pull out the win. It's uh, it was, dude, De- Deontay Foreman. Ooh, he a problem. Ooh, he's a problem. Christian McCaffrey, who? Yeah, right. This. Uh, moving on to the Bears and Cowboys. I, I mean, that was. A fantastic win, and the Atlanta Falcons, sitting at 500, are now number one in the NFC South, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take it. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, I was hoping, you know, there were moments the Bears were coming back, and then it just never happened. Tony Pollard is better than Zeke. At this stage, you might be right. Tony Pollard is RB1. That's just that. That's what it is. That's not an opinion. That's not. I'm not going to debate. You, you're not debating it. He's Ezekiel Elliott has lost his step. It's done. Tony Pollard's the guy now. You got to put him in at the starting position. If you don't, you're just wasting your time. I think you you need a balance. Uh, Zeke's three yards compared to five or six yards per carry. Did but you see? Pollard, but Pollard's so effective because he's fresh. He won. Fr- he played the whole game on Sunday. <laughs> I mean, fourteen was, carries is it's you know it's he it's, was it's the probably, bears. fourteen carries for hundred thirty one yards. <laughs> fourteen carries is probably high for him, but I mean you know. He was, so he he was like, oh, this is my time to shine. <laughs> he it, he's it's definitely it's very it's a good idea to get him involved for sure. He clearly seems to be making a difference. No, he's definitely making a difference. Uh, I mean, this team that Dak everything, Luke- everything was pointing south. I mean, you had the offensive line woes, the Dak injury, Randy Gregory's gone, and yet still six and two. Cooper Makes Rush. Me- Cooper Rush is the reason. You got to think Cooper Rush. If you don't have Cooper Rush, I don't think they. I don't think they they win those games that Dak was out. I mean, they only lost what one game. With yeah, Dak being out, so I mean, because that shit could have turned sideways fast, definitely. But and I think I think a lot of people thought that was going to happen, but no one saw fucking Cooper Rush coming in and winning. Was it like four straight, and then losing one to the Eagles? 
But Dak looked healthy. He looked he looked healthy. He looked good on Sunday. Um, obviously, yeah, he looks he looks better than Russell did coming back from his injury. Yeah, obviously it's 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 the, it's the Bears defense. You know, um, I think they're I think the Giants game when they play the Giants again is going to be a problem. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, the Eagles are the second best team in the NFL right now. Behind the Bills? Absolutely. <laughs> There's nobody better than the Bills. I can't. You, so you're putting them ahead of the Chiefs? Yeah. Okay. If, the, if the Eagles and the Chiefs had to play, I think it's going to be it's it's going to be a problem. That defense, the Chiefs' defense, don't show me enough. They yeah. they they're not that. The Chiefs never really had a great defense. Right. <clears throat> they just had Patrick Mahomes. And when you when you're a quarterback, you have Tyreek Hill. So when you can keep a defense on the field for so long, you keep yours off the field and let them rest. I mean, yeah, it's 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 easy. But I, I honestly, I'm I got to say the Eagles are the second best team, and I just don't see Dallas being able to beat them the second time around. It's gonna be a tough game, but yeah. It definitely will be. I'm I'm telling you, dude, the Eagles, I've quick quickly they there's they're they're a team to watch. <laughs> I'd say so. Uh Lions lose here. One and six. It was a it was a good game. I, I can't lie to you. That game they went back, they were back and forth. It was an up and down game. Um, but the Lions always tend to figure out how to way to lose games. So that's the Lions being the Lions. Oh, yeah, yeah, want to root for him so bad. So you know? fucking bad. And then and then you get a guy in there that's extremely likable and Dan Campbell. Yep. And he couldn't coach his way out of a fucking paper bag. <laughs> I can barely really get you so far. I personally believe that the Lions are gonna have the number one draft pick this year. They're what one and six now. They're gonna have the top, they're gonna have the number one pick. They're either going to take CJ Stroud. Bryce Young, I'm thinking they might. I'm thinking they might take. I think they might go with. I for me personally, I would probably go with Bryce Young because he's the better athlete. But right, we'll have to see. But you have to take a quarterback. You cannot keep Jared Goff back there. No. Uh, this game was fun too. The Vikings six and one. I mean, quietly. This game was fun. It, this game was fun. It was fun to watch. Um. Kyler Murray, I want to get this guy a chance. I really do. I want to give Kyler Murray a chance. I want to believe he can be that guy. I just don't believe that guy. He's exciting. He's exciting. Every anybody can be exciting, but I don't think he can be. He you gotta win games. You, you gotta win games. Um, Back to back, 100 yard performances for DeAndre Hopkins, just walking out of bed essentially. Yeah, basically, <laughs> he was gone for six weeks. <laughs> just like, okay, no problem, 100 yards. Yeah, it's easy, but you got to win them late games. True. Yes. True. This shit here, this is a fucking. The Raiders are. <laughs> the Raiders are trash. I'll Raiders say this. Boo boo. I'm probably not the only one who feels this way. Andy Dalton might be a better quarterback for this team than Jameis. Yes. James. Yes. Absolutely. And Jameis, you know, I have no reason to say that Jameis was not right, but I mean, this offense is clicking right now with backup, backups to the backups. Right. They don't have so. Hey, here's my thing. As a Saints GM, you have to start assessing this situation. Right, you paid a guy a hundred million dollars. Right, this motherfucker ain't played in two years. <laughs> Why are you not on the field right now? You are the freshest body out of everybody in the league. You ain't played in two years, and you you you, you got your your hammies hurt. You, you ha- what you got to go. I'm about to cut you. I got to cut ties with you. I'm wasting <laughs> money on you at this point. 
I'm paying you all this money. You play all of two games this season. Two. You've been out for two years. You played two whole games this season. Yeah. And you missed two years. That math ain't adding up, buddy. And I just, you know, I, I, he's a, he's a fantastic player when he's healthy. I have a hard time believing if he was healthy, the Saints would be, you know, having a winning record. I don't think he's the difference between the Saints, uh, winning and losing right now. You, you also, have, you know, look at it. The defense is aging. They're not getting any younger. They added Tyron Matthew. He's up there in age. Marshawn Lattimore isn't as good as he as everyone thought he was without a pass rush. Uh, what's his name? Jordan, he's getting old. So you go, there's only so much you can do. And your young guy, your young pass rushers, they're not helping you too much. Like if you like when they play good offensive lines, they're non existent. I like Davenport. Um, you know, Pete Warner, Paulson and Dave, but there's young guys on the team, but yes, like the the Super Bowl window it's there. is closing. Yeah, it's it's oh it's definitely closing. They they don't have much. And, and and especially because you don't really have a quarterback, like you can only you can do there's only so much you can do with Taysom Hill. Right. You, you're gonna need a real quarterback. They tried that shit. They was like, oh, we can run with Taysom. Taysom, once people figured out Taysom's game, <clears throat> and the, you know, do you know what team figured him out first? <clears throat> the Eagles. Yeah. No, no. It was that game because Taysom was going to run until they played the Eagles, and the Eagles shut that shit up quickly. I was happy to see that. Uh, let's talk about a boring game, dude. My God. Zach Wilson is trash. I I have to I have to I defended Zach Wilson for two years. I've defended him his rookie season. I defended him last year. I was like, man, he got beat up a lot last year. It wasn't his fault. Zach Wilson is the what is it? He is spoiled oatmeal. Three years. He's shit. He's terrible. He's, he's he's a bad quarterback. And you can't tell me otherwise. I have been waiting for... He probably has a single play, right? But I've been waiting for, like, that a successful play. play. A couple of plays to say, okay, like, maybe... You know, maybe the play calling, maybe the coach, but ultimately this is a really good player. I don't see that in Zach Wilson yet. I have not seen a single play to make me go, oh, yeah, under the right circumstances, he will be awesome. I haven't seen that yet. I, I don't even I, I don't I don't see a circumstance where he's going to be. He's going to be a pro bowler. He right. at some point, he is what the Jets have to deal with right now. Um. I would have kept Joe Flacco in until Joe Flacco started pro becoming a problem. I mean, crazy as that sounds, he had the offense moving. I, I would have kept Joe Flacco as my starter. Um, yeah. I wouldn't have just threw him back in uh, I, at this point because it showed. There was a couple. There was like two intercept, two bad interceptions, <laughs> and these interceptions were bad. Like it just like he just said, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna throw that right there." And then I'm just like, what the fuck? The worst one I saw is he was trying to throw it out of bounds. And it didn't make it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Just throw the shit out of bounds. I don't even care if you get past the line of scrimmage. Just throw it out of bounds. Don't throw an interception. And he throws it. And it doesn't even make it. I'm like, this motherfucker here. I have defended Zach Wilson for two years now. Okay. I blamed the offensive line last year for him getting for him. He got beat up last year. Um, they made some moves to help that. Um, his wideouts, I think he has some good wideouts with Elijah Moore and uh, what's his name, Garrett Wilson. Yep. I think the the, the running back game, Brees Hall. Even now that Brees Hall, you have you have the you have uh, James Robinson from fucking Jacksonville. You have a great running back. 
So I don't see the problem. Your defense is outstanding. So what's the problem? You have wideouts. You have people to throw the ball to. I'm not understanding the issue. There's a hangup somewhere, and the hangup is him. Yeah. I want to say it's coaching, but you know what? I don't think it is. I think Rob Sala. I think Robert Sala is a for a defensive minded coach. He's pretty decent. But Zach Wilson, he's the problem. You know, you wonder, or at least I wonder, when you're so talented, are you are you seeing the initial read and waiting for something better to happen? Or are you just not seeing the initial read at all? Like, that's the question I have, right? Like, is the hook route boring or are you just not seeing the hook route at all? So that's just. I don't, I, I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't think he's seeing anything at all, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, again, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing these, the wall plays. I'm not seeing the, like, I'm not, I don't even want to say, I, I'm not seeing just, I'm not seeing quarterback play. I'm not going to say Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rod- I don't see quarterback play from, from Zach Wilson. Like he, <clears throat> they had their first passing touchdown. I think this year, this week, I think he's thrown maybe two passing touchdowns this year. It's like, how the fuck you can't win games like that. Like you got to make an effort. But you know what I mean though? Like when, when you had to be the superstar for your college team, I think it can be hard to dial it back and like be conservative chain mover for your pro team. Um, like a Michael Vick, like a Cam Newton, like, when you could do it all for your college team, I think it's hard to just hit the check down, you know, hit the out route, like things like that. I think those guys maybe see the check down, but like they'll scramble, wait for something more, and then they eventually just end up getting sacked. And I think that ends up being Zach Wilson too. Like I, I think sometimes your talent can get in the way of just being a an efficient football player. It, it- it has to, but yeah. they, the Jets got to figure out something because yeah. you're five and three, you still in you still in the division, you still have it, but you got you you're not beating Buffalo. I mean, five and three is that's that's a hell of a. I wouldn't get them credit <laughs> so far. Five and three is not where I had the Jets so far. I'll say that. Um, boy, this ass whooping. <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers, they just never had a chance against the Eagles. Uh, A.J. Brown was just like, I'm just going to have a day. He was like, you know what? I'm rested. I'm going to go for three touchdowns today. (laughs) A.J. Brown had such a day that the NFL drug tested him on the very next day. (laughs) The random drug test. I'm like, like, wait a minute. But he wasn't the only one with a three-touchdown performance. (laughs) I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, uh, he had three. Kamara had three, too. I told Rapid Dave because he was like, well, they're not going to test the shitty players, right? I said, they should have at least tested Jalen Rager for optics. <laughs> well, yeah, so. he, dude, he, he, had a, he had a day for himself. Jalen Hurts is, he's definitely, he's my, he's my, he's, he's, he's going to be my, uh, he's going to be my runner up for the MVP. Man, I mean, if I had only put a few bucks down at the beginning of the season, he had some great odds for MVP that I'd love he, to be on right he's, now. He's going to be my runner-up. He's not going to win the MVP, but he's definitely going to be my runner-up. Why do I Why do I not just, you know, just get the Powerball ticket? I could get a billion dollars, for God's sakes. Like, stop being such a skeptic. Hey, uh, you, you miss every shot you don't take. Exactly, dude. Some idiot. Some moron is going to have a billion dollars in his fucking account because he just bought a ticket and I'm going to be here like, Oh yeah. Go buy one. Um, but yeah, no, the Eagles are definitely the second best team in the NFL. That's just, there's no arguing that. Your boy, Derrick Henry, bro. He ran out the gym, out the stadium. 32. That's why 14 carries from fucking what's his face. Does not impress me. Uh, 32 carries for Derrick Henry here. Dude, he always goes for he always goes for 200 yards against the Texans. For whatever reason, the Texans just like y'all know what? I'm not tackling him, so y'all just let him run. We're just gonna let him run past us. Holy, 
I have a, uh, I think I have Brandon Cooks in almost every fantasy league. Was really hoping for a trade. Didn't happen. So it would have been nice. Green Bay should have made an offer. A second round, third round. I don't know. Something. Your, your receiver yeah, core the, is depleted. The division leading, if I'm not mistaken, five and two Titans. Yes. They're, the, they're leading the division at the moment. And they're probably going to run away with this division here shortly. Because you have the three and four Indianapolis Colts falling to the four and four Washington Commies. Sam Ellinger got close, couldn't finish the job. This man went 23 for 31 for 279 and a touchdown. How? So this game, for those of you who didn't watch it, was actually in Indianapolis' hands until the final seconds of the game. When Taylor Heineke throws up a prayer and Stephon Gilmore just played the ball wrong and fucking Terry McLaurin takes it from him, takes it right from him, right on the goal line. There's like maybe 30 seconds left and uh, Tommy's punching in for a game winning touchdown. Just, Just start Taylor Heineke if you have him. Make sure you start Terry McLaurin as well. This one, how about how about Christian McCaffrey making history? Nate? Christian Christian McCaffrey is a all he's he's a top <laughs> five running back when he's healthy. I mean, I think it was like him, Walter Payton, Jim Brown, and like two other Gail Sayers. Like it was him and like three other guys who have ever thrown for a touchdown. Ran for a touchdown and caught a touchdown in the same all in the same game. Jesus, the Rams are done. You can go ahead and stick a point. Oh, dude, Rams the Rams, done. Rams are done. Matthew Stafford, listen here, Matthew. <laughs> it's time to retire. Okay, you're a bad quarterback. You got lucky last year. It's time to retire. You watched that girl fall off stage and you didn't offer any help. None whatsoever. You did nothing for her. You, you turned around and left for all we knew. I, I think Von Miller, and it's the saddest part about this, Von Miller made a difference on this team. He he made the absolute difference on this goddamn team. And now that he's not here, that defense isn't the same. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. It's insane. The crazy thing is, he didn't do much or nothing last last <laughs> year. But he made he just him being on the field was enough. This this defense is the Rams defense is it's bad. It's not as great. Jalen Ramsey is not looking like the best corner in the game right now. Uh, Aaron Donald has been damn near invisible, and Matthew Stafford. He's being Matthew Stafford. There's, there's just, I mean, this Rams team is all about like rhythm and clicking and play calling, and the play action leads into the big pass, and the, the defense plays off the the offense, and it's just like none of that's happening this year. It's just complete none. stuck in first gear. Cam Makers took the league by storm last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he fell on his face this year, now he, I'm surprised they didn't trade him. Um, Daryl Henderson is – he has a couple pop plays, but that's really, really it. So Right. He's definitely not uh, – he's not they, top girl. Yet. The Rams are probably going to miss the playoffs this year. Yep. Yep. Um, well, this was nice to see. Geno. Geno. Finally, the, the Giants losing a game. <laughs> Listen to me. The Giants are a deal. They're a problem. I, I I hear you. I'm, I'm, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, good Lord, dude. Name a Giants receiver. I, I dare you. You can't. You can't <laughs> name one. But Darius Slayton is up there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, he is. But you, you, the thing is, dude, the Giants are I, – I just think that defense kind of – they just kind of fell short. When it comes – like, as a defensive player, you don't want to be on the field for 10, 15 minutes. You you want to be on the field maybe three to five at most six, but when you get when you get to a point where you're constantly on the field and they start 
punishing you with the run, at some point, that bend but don't break, you're going to fucking break at some point. Yeah. So, I think they're going to bounce back next week. The Seahawks are on fire. Geno Smith is playing a whole lot better than fucking Russell, West, Russell Wilson is. So, I think that trade benefited. I think the Seahawks won that trade. I think so. I mean, Kenneth Walker looks really sharp right now. Uh, even this no-name defense for the Seahawks has yeah. stepped up the past three weeks. I mean, they shut down Justin Herbert last week, and now they got this big win at home against the Giants. So it's nice to see. Yeah, it, it's definitely nice to see. Um, I, I'm going to say this, and I, I say this once, but I'm going to say it again. The Buffalo Bills are the best team in the NFL. Agreed. No, man, there's no questions, no arguing. Josh Allen is this league's MVP. He's gonna Josh win. Allen, I mean, was fantastic last year. But last year, at least Patrick Mahomes was also fantastic. So there was kind of this, like, balance. It's not it's even close all, this year. It's all Josh Allen this year. It's not even close this year. Yeah. Josh Allen is playing his ass off. Yeah. Him and Stephon Diggs are the best quarterback receiver duo in the game right now. Yep. And – they put the the only hang up, the only hang up I have with them is they put up three points in the second half. That's fair. Yeah. That's my only hang up with this team. And and you put it and you in that you you allow Green Bay to hold you to three points in the second half. Now mind you, the granted, <clears throat> the defense kept you in the game because at any point. That game, them them holding you three points could have cost you the game. But with Green Bay being depleted, um, with at the receivers position, there's only so much they could have. They only so much they could do. Um, so there will come a point, and I mean they've already lost one game. There will come a point when a team effectively shuts down Stephon Diggs. And they need to rely on someone else. Gabe Davis. So, Dude, Davis. Right. Like, is it going to be Gabe Davis, like, with the big games he can have? Or is it just going to be, like, so that's what this Buffalo team, if I was going to be a skeptic, if I was going to say anything, like, critique this team, I would say when the shit hits the fan and Stefan Diggs just cannot get open, like, what's your plan B? So, and then, is, and then, is and that's ball with Singletary? Is it Gabe Davis? Is it? Josh Allen running the ball because goddamn man, when he runs the ball, no one wants to get in front of him. So, and, and that's my and that's my biggest thing is like for me is the question. I'm like, I'm I watched the game on Sunday and I'm just like, how do you lose Stefan Diggs? He's not that fast. He's not a Tyreek Hill. He's not right. he's he's not a, a Miko Hardman type guy. But he's like a he's like a fourth round pick out of Maryland. Somehow. He manages to get behind your defense. And I'm like, what the fuck are y'all doing? I'm like, why is it? And every time they pan the camera, why is it one-on-one? What are you, what are you doing? This is – Stefan Diggs right now is probably the best receiver right now in the league. And you got one – no. No. You need to have – you need you, you need to do a bracket or something. You need to put, uh, put a safety over top, keep a corner underneath. It's vice versa, I don't know. You need to do something because there's no reason for this shit to be playing out this way. It was definitely a disappointment that Green Bay didn't grab someone for the trade deadline. Green but Bay. you know, Alan Lazard will be back. I'm he's been pretty good so far. I think that's their hope. Dude, listen, this 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 whole Green Bay thing is it's always been this way. Yeah, they they hadn't drafted a a, a player. In the first round, a skills player since 2002. That that's on that's the, 20 years. On the one hand, like you got to respect the success they've had, uh, you know, doing it the way they've done it. But on the other hand, the what's man, fucking had, success? They never pick high, right? Like they're always picking later in the draft. Because and of they get success. these bad receivers. It's like the Steelers. I mean, they 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 fucking just never pick high. Like they do constantly have enough success to be considered a good team. It's just that then they don't like pick thirty second or anything. And that's the crazy thing. Then you look at it like with Green Bay. 
Every receiver that has left Green Bay that played with Evan Rodgers, they were shit everywhere else. Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings, Devontae Adams. Ironically, Javon Walker, Jordy Nelson, and Devontae Adams all went to the Raiders. <laughs> Right, exactly. And they all put and, – and, and even at one point, even with Randall Cobb, Randall Cobb left, and he wasn't great. So right. it shows me, like, it's the system that these bad receivers are in because you got – what's his name? Mark – I hate saying his name. Scantling? Yeah. Like, he's in Kansas City right now, He's he's and he's he's just average right now. Right. He's had a couple big plays, but that's that's the Chiefs' offense. Big plays is the Chiefs' offense. Like you're gonna have big play, big chunk plays. But at just just one time before Aaron Rodgers retired, Green Bay. I hope you're listening. Get him a first round pick, a receiver. Just get it. Get him somebody. Get a first round pick. Just one time before he fucking retires. And see what type of difference that make because you ain't got shit right now. No, Chris, you, you're both your rookies. One is in a doghouse, and the other one can't stay out of the blue tent. Uh, speaking of big name receivers, boy, the Bengals are missing theirs. <laughs> Jamar Chase is out, and I don't know who's in because they weren't finding him the other night. Bengals, Joe 13, Burrow, Browns, thirty-two. Joe Burrow screwed me. He screwed me last night. All I needed him to do was to give me at least 20. I need 20 points. This fucker gave me 13, and I lost by three points. The Bengals are shit without Jamar Chase. They're shit. They're shit without Jamar Chase. And it's weird because Tyler Boyd and fucking T. Higgins, they light the scoreboard up without him. Uh, yeah, but, but so so he's so he's no longer in the game, and y'all ain't y'all can't do shit against the Browns. Come on, man! You go just just look like a fucking all star last night. It it was just ugly though. Like the the run game with Joe Mixon never really took off. Like you know the passes to Boyd and Higgins were like. When they did complete him, it was like, whoa, whoa, what a surprise, you know, because it wasn't, like, efficient. It wasn't, like, a smooth running machine. Like, I don't know, man. This, this, they got excited. defending AFC champions uh, got a lot of work to do to get back to that level. They got fucking excited because they blew the Falcons out. I'm like, listen, our secondary was depleted. AJ Terrell left with a fucking hamstring injury, so he didn't finish the game. So we're playing with a bunch of backups. You're supposed to do that. TJ has a You're supposed to do that. You're supposed to beat the teams that are depleted. You're supposed to beat the bad teams. And then you go up against Cleveland, and they just run your ass out the building. You're awful, Cincinnati. Okay, you're awful. Well, yeah, sorry. Well, that wraps up all the scores for this week. It's oh, yeah. it, it. The NFL is shaping up differently this year. Like it, there, there is no. Obviously, you got your clear cut. You still got to, you know, the Bills. We all know the Bills are gonna be at, gonna be there at the end. We all know that. Mm-hmm. The Eagles are gonna be there, but that's it. The Chiefs hey. are going to be there, but everything else is its going to play out in the end. How do you – I didn't even realize that Falcons got the Chargers this week. So, I'm going to pick this Eagles game first. That's going to be easy. I'm starting everybody on the Eagles this week. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, talk about – they are a 14-point favorite. I, I am wow. starting – I am starting <laughs> everybody – on the Eagles from Eight, the defense score. Oh, wow. <laughs> from the defense to to Dallas Goddard. Yeah. All everybody yeah. everybody's playing this week. When I Buffalo hate- was getting eleven. I thought that was disrespect. <laughs> Holy shit. I hate I hate playing I hate having players that play on Thursday. But when they enter a matchup like this, I cannot pass this up. I am starting everybody. 
that plays for the Eagles this week. The Chargers are favored in Atlanta. That's nice. The Chargers are going to lose this game. Justin Herbert is playing like dog shit. Miami right, favored in Chicago. That's it. That, Dolphins. Easy. Dolphins. That's that's not even a fucking question. Um, Here's a good one. <laughs> um, Battle of the Big Cats. Panthers, Bengals in Cincinnati. <sighs> Cincinnati, seven point favorite. I gotta get. I gotta give it to Cincinnati. Oh. I, I got to because I don't. I think at some point that PJ Walker is gonna fizzle out. That that hot that hot streak is gonna is gonna burn out, and it's 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 gonna catch up to him. But if they can keep if they can keep Deontay Foreman running the ball. They might be okay, but I definitely have to pick Cincinnati in that one. This is easy. I'm going Packers with Detroit. Lines. I'm going to say Detroit's going to win this game. Oh, he said that was easy for you. Huh? I'm going to say Detroit's going to win this game. I don't see the. I I don't see. I, I just don't see them bouncing back in this game. Um, about- you don't have receivers. You don't have wideouts. So. Aaron Jones can only do so much. A.J. Dillon can only do so much for you. Romeo Dobbs is okay at best. So, yeah. Folks, when you have an over-under that's less than 40, don't watch that game. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the Patriots taking on the Colts, don't watch that game. Bill Belichick against young quarterbacks, it's, it's a done deal. Patriots. Mac Jones versus Sam Ellinger. <laughs> Don't watch that game. Good lord. And now TJ's Jets hosting Buffalo. the Buffalo Bills. A Buffalo. mere 13 point favorites. Buffalo. Uh, you, you can't even, you can't even make this a, this is not even a contest. Zach Wilson is gonna be running for his fucking life on Sunday. Minnesota three and a half over the commanders. Minnesota. Minnesota. Easy. Minnesota. Vegas, a one-point favorite in Jacksonville. I actually like Jacksonville there. I do. I like Jacksonville because Derek Carr is shit. I like Jacksonville to take this game. Uh, oh, this Arizona? is Seattle. Seattle. That's the Gino, highest point total. Oh, Gino, Gino Smith's on a, Gino Smith's on mm. the tear. He, he's playing great football. Um, the Cardinals – or up and down. I, I don't DeAndre Hopkins is gonna go for a hundred, but that defense is that defense got some issues. Tampa Bay versus the LA Rams should be a this really be good the, game. This is gonna be the Rams. This, this this the Rams should win this game. Unfortunately, this has the feeling of a shit game. <laughs> because these teams have been playing like shit. I, gotta, I mean, I gotta take the Rams. They they gotta take advantage of this bad, of the depleted Bucks team. You have to, like the offensive mm-hmm. line isn't great. Mm-hmm. Brady is playing like shit. They can't run the ball. You, you gotta, you got, to, you have to be able to take this. So I, I gotta go Rams in this one. Oh, this is TJ left. TJ left already just because I didn't read his comment about starting Cam Newton. This gonna, this this game is gonna be fun. You like this game? Chiefs, Titans. Titans and Chiefs is going to be a fun game. Okay. Derrick Henry, Patrick Mahomes. Um, I think this is going to be a fun game. I think this is going to be a fun game for sure. They're, both five, they're both five and two. I, yeah, I, that's a good point. I, I shit. I, I don't know. It's a toss up. I'm probably going to say Chiefs because that Titans defense is a little, it's a, a wee bit suspect, but. If you can get Derrick Henry going early, like you did against the Texans, you can control the game. So it doesn't matter to you if Willis or Tannehill plays? You think it's the same odds? Yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. I, I think I think with Malik Willis, if you can get him to go, you the thing you you have more options with him. You have you you have the run pass option, and that's a fucking dangerous thing when you have Derrick Henry back there. Right, like you, you gotta respect the run one way or the other. So if you if you don't, then that's gonna be a problem for you. 
So I think I would start Malik Willis and keep him in and then just use his strengths, use his legs, move the pocket, uh, play action, get that Chiefs defense to bite, and they will because they they, they, they they will. Um, and just control the clock, honestly. That's how you beat Patrick Mahomes, control the clock. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you drafted the kid for a reason. At the same time, you're five and two. You don't want to fuck that up. So it's like, oh. And that's it. But if Penny is not healthy, healthy, then you got to go with the young guy. For sure. Yeah, you got to go with whoever's giving you the best chance. For sure. Uh, Monday night, baby. I think it's gonna be awesome. Ram, uh, Ravens and Saints. Yeah, New Orleans hosting Baltimore. Taysom Hill versus Lamar Jackson. And I mean, you mentioned it. Mostly, I didn't even really bring it up enough. Um, Ravens now have Roquan Smith on the team, bro. They Patrick Queen, Patrick Queen, and Roquan Smith. Oh, talking about a tandem, get the Ooh. fuck out of here. Good luck, LSU and Georgia. Good luck with that because that's gonna be a problem. Um, I think the Ravens, I think the Ravens can take this one, okay? Uh, I, I think so. I, I think. Again, with Roquan Smith, I think that – oh, fuck me. I just saw that the Browns of a bye week. I got to find a Nick Chubb replacement. <laughs> fuck. Damn it. Uh, um, yeah, he's worried about a single bye week replacement. Jesus. Life must be good in fantasy. <laughs> um. The Raven, I get, I, I'm going I'm to give this game to the Ravens. Just because of their, just because of the acquisition of Roquan Smith, like this guy has been playing out of his fucking mind this season, and you you pair him with Patrick Queen, and then the rest of that defense, it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a long day for <laughs> the Saints. I mean, for a guy who's been playing with no guarantee of a contract, it's been None. pretty fucking. Impressive. Oh, he gonna get paid. He he gonna, he gonna get paid for Lamar Jackson does. That's for damn sure. Meffers, you thought we weren't going to be able to fit all this news in one show. <laughs> you were wrong. We talked about takeoff. We talked about James Gordon Meek, who was spotted recently. I can finally unpin my Facebook post. He has been spotted. He's alive. He's not answering questions, but he's alive. Um, we also talked about college football. We talked about NFL. Um, we had a little, little update from baseball. A little bit of baseball, yes. The Astros are going to win, believe it or not. It's still seven to zip. Mm. Oh, shit, the Phillies are up. Yeah, I said that wrong. The Phillies are up. <laughs> seven to zip. The Philadelphia Phillies are winning the World Series game two right now. It's, a game, it's game three, man. No, it's game... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. The Philadelphia Phillies lead this series. Two games to one. They won tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. So is, so is the next game wins? Best out of five or best out of seven? It's uh, as best as seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, NBA's still kicking. You know, Kyrie Irving's pissing people off. I'm sure we'll talk about that next week. <laughs> I meant to Man. bring it up, but I fucking forgot about it. MFers, you know what time it is. We love you. Catch us every Tuesday about 9... You know, we're in this area, 9.30, 9-ish. We'll make the announcement. You'll catch it. If you're on YouTube, like, follow, share, uh, subscribe. Do all that sorts of things. Anything before we get out of here, Nate? It's been a wild show. Yeah, it's been a wild show. We're, we're, we're getting a lot. Our show's are getting a lot longer. So. Yeah, my God. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>